Well, welcome to our morning class here from Wellington International, the Winter Equestrian Festival. The sun is shining, the heat is up, and in for a morning Grand Prix here as part of Nations Cup Week as well, getting underway at 11, but it'll take us into the afternoon as well. So it's a, a lunchtime session for this JTWG presented uh, Grand Prix, who, uh, again, are supplying and supporting our surfaces uh, here at the Winter Equestrian Festival throughout, and, uh, well, they're certainly well used and well maintained. So uh, who's going to be competing over them? Well, uh, we're going to be over here with Florida Coast Equipment as well, our sponsors last night of the Nations Cup as well. Their Kubotas also are providing the maintenance here for our arenas as well. And our streaming brought to you by Dodd Technologies, leaders in their field and over 40 years of experience in uh, the sporting industry as well, supporting everyone from the NFL to the NCAA too. And of course, support from the equestrian world, from US Equestrian and uh, USEF Network as well as we bring you our big classes here from from Southern Florida as well. And bringing it all here for you today is myself, Stephen Wilde, alongside Danny Woolman. Danny, you're dressed for, for our fences out there. We've got brightness for the morning. Absolutely. We have a lot of bright fences out there. And uh, it's sun is shining. It's sunny, sunny Florida. It's finally Florida. It's finally looking like, I'm yeah. going to say, it's going to say winter, but it sounds all wrong. It feels like summer everywhere else. Um, walking the course out there, it's, it's a really interesting track. Uh, $200,000 JTWG uh, Nations Cup Grand Prix. It feels a little like the morning after the night before at the moment. Uh, Nations Cup success last night. Everyone's pulling themselves back together and into it. Um, reflecting Irish fantastic run last night. We're back to individual sport. Yeah, absolutely. You know, last night was great sport. It was very interesting. Irish sort of dominated the whole night. They were wonderful. But uh, I don't think it's a walk in the park this morning. Everyone has to be on their game. It looks like it's a stout course and uh, jumps just keep coming at you. And it is hot and humid out there. So it's going to take some jumping today. Let's, let's take a look at the track designed by Steve Stevens and Nick Granite here as well. A uh, few really interesting fences that you won't see on this, but we'll talk them through uh, for you as uh, we grow. So uh, where are we off to, Danny? Fence number one coming alongside the table bank. Absolutely. We started number one in Oxer, a little bit rampy, then left turn, kind of a long run down down to the Kubota Oxer. It's quite a stout Oxer. I think it's very square, very wide, very big to start. Then right-hand turn, past the in gate, back on a new wall that we haven't seen yet. No, Rio, um, Rio colors. Yeah, exactly. Rio colors, beautiful wall. Then bending eight strides, a little bit on the inside track, to the Lugano Diamonds Triple, Oxer vertical Oxer. It's been difficult jumps to jump all season. But uh, with the triple here, I think that's going to be a challenging part. Then a bending steady six strides to the black skinny. And then you have a little bit of a breather, but of course time allowed I think will be short. Left-handed turn up by the scoreboard to this Liverpool Oxer, big solid Oxer. Then it walks about five and a half. We'll see, I think, yeah. people thinking either five or six into the tall double verticals with those avocado-colored rails. Right-hand turn. Nine strides, middle to middle on the bend to another wide oxer at the net jets. Then a steady up four to the minty green vertical with the offset Liverpool into the corner. Not an easy line. And then right hand turn. Need a little reorganization. We have another double coming up. Vertical oxer here. Those golden black poles. And then it's going to be a bending six strides to a wide Hermes oxer. Very strong jump there at number 11. And then left-handed turn coming up quickly. It's going to be the uh, bridge jump yeah, from that Pan we Ams. saw from yeah. Pan Ams. And then five strides to a very, very wide oxer at the last. So certainly... A lot of jumping that needs to be done, and things just come up quickly. Certainly do. 175, the uh, width on the last there as well. So uh, lots to get their heads around here. As I say, there's a, a few combinations coming from the Nations Cup. Quite a few uh, new fresh horses here as well, which is going to be interest interesting to see. Last year's winner was Daniel Coyle with Ivory TCS. Uh, Irish were winning then. Uh, we'll see what happens this time around. Yeah, uh, I mean, we'll see if the Irish can do it again. Kean O'Connor has a good one in here. Um, a bunch of riders. I mean, McLean is riding Contagious. Yep. That's, of course, his Olympic mount. There's some very strong partnerships and uh, a lot of, like you said, fresh horses. They jumped the qualifier or a smaller class earlier in the week, and now they're just kind of getting ready, so they're geared up for this big jumping class. So they are. We're going to come to all of that after we take a short break. Back in a few minutes. With NetJets, travel will always be personal. We do everything it takes to make every flight exceptional. 
Every single detail of your experience is personalized, just for you. As our standard is not just to meet our definition of perfection, it's to exceed yours. The number five fence, which is the Dodd Technologies vertical, the skinny black after the triple combination. They will swing around to the number six fence, which is the orange twist oxer, coming across the center by the gazebo, and negotiate the 7A and B. This is the fan vertical vertical combination, also with a one stride between, and a one of our That is the uh, gold leaf uh, vertical oxer combination, the second of the two doubles in our course here today, and a slight right-hand angle to the number 11 Hermes orange and white fence at fence number 11. Homeward bound over the Chilean uh, bridge, the uh, yellow bridge that was utilized in the uh, Pan American Games in Santiago, Chile last October and November, and that is fence number 12, and now finishing up over the uh, black and white oxer directly in front of our judges and announcing position at fence number 13. Of course, will carry a time allowed to 76 seconds, measuring at 475 meters here in our length of course and a time for jump off formula for our competition all ahead of us. We ask the riders to try to finish up the course walk. Course is now closed. Appreciate it. As we lead up again to a very special presentation, we're going to check out the video screen for the style of riding preview. Here it is. The partnership between horse and rider is unlike any other team sport on earth. They cannot be bought or sold. They are made, developed, maintained with mutual trust, respect, and understanding. Developing a successful partnership is the base of every successful show jump and career for both horse and rider. A rider can have all the talent in the world and the horse can be the greatest competitor. But it is the perfect pairing of the two that make dreams a reality. Some riders are lucky enough to find their once-in-a-lifetime partner that can take them all the way. And a select few have honed the craft of developing those partnerships to create a generational string of once-in-a-lifetime forces, helping them propel them into the league of their own. Ashley Bond is one of these horsemen. From a young age, it was apparent that Ashley had all the talent to make it far in the sport. But it has been the devotion to bringing the best out in each of her horses that has gotten her and secured her at the highest levels of show jumping. From her first superstar mount, Chella LS, to her most recent Donatella 141, whom she took to her first Olympic Games in 2020. Ashley and her tightly knit string of budding talents operate differently, much like that of a mother and her kids. Ashley watches over her horses with nothing but their best interests in mind. She knows when to push them and when to let them rest. She knows all their quirks, ticks, and things that make each of them unique. 
the innate understanding of who the horse is beyond their scope, experience, and record is what allows her to uncover what it is that is going to make them not just good, but great. Horses are clearly family to Ashley Bond, and her path to the top has been paved and solidified not only by her sheer talent, but also by her devoted partners giving back to her everything that she has invested in them. Congratulations to Ashley Bond of winning the Kate Nash Boone Style of Riding Award. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to honor the uh, perpetual trophy presented by Michael Miller, friends and family, to honor the memory of Kate Nash Boone. As Kate's support and love of all things equestrian, we honor, as you saw up on the big screen and up on the video board now, as we are honored to present to Ashley Bond the M. Michael Miller Style of Riding Award, as well as the Kate Nash Boone, the uh, perpetual trophy. Congratulations to the rider representing Israel in grand style, Ashley Bond, the recipient here on Nations Cup week here at the CSIO competition. We are just moments away for the start of our time for jump off format. See a $200,000 purse offered here today. As we had noted earlier, we have a field of 45 competitors that will be a part of our opening round of competition. 24 nations throughout the week here at our CSIO venue here at Wellington International as we honor all of that group. The international riders come to Wellington each and every winter as we have the world-class and Olympic style and Olympic caliber show jumping each and every week. As we honor our 24 countries that are visiting, we ask you all now at this time to please rise as we are about to get underway with our Grand Prix. We honor the host country with the anthem of the United States of America. All set to play ball set here this afternoon, this morning, and early afternoon. We have a field of 45 to show. And again, our time allowed is 76 This is a morning class, uh, but uh, kicking off at 11, we'll be uh, running through 49 combinations in all, so it'll take us over a lunchtime slot. So hopefully it gives you a nice Sunday lunch uh, entertainment to uh, take in. Time allowed of 76 seconds around the course, designed by Nick Granite and uh, Steve Stevens here. Prize purse of 200,000, as you know, 475 metres, uh, 30 17 numbered obstacles, 17 jumping efforts, a lot to get your teeth into as this uh, final Grand Prix of the week of uh, Nations Cup week. And then we're into Five Star Week again next week as well. It's all coming thick and fast and uh, lots coming up. But we're very lucky because we get to do it all in one place as opposed to upping sticks and taking the circus down the road. Uh, so our uh, ringmaster has said it's right and ready to go. And this is who's coming up in our class. Uh, Juan Pablo Janeco starts us off with uh, Habab W for Colombia. David Cameron of Australia. Oaks come by chance. Ben Mayer goes early with a very good uh, point break. Mary Delorier, Bardolina 2, that's one to look out for there. They've gone very well in this before. I think they might have been uh, top of this before as well. Daniel Blumen and uh, Gemma W go in the uh, first 10. Uh, Vanessa Hood, Vins, Jordan Coyle, Shakalino. Uh, Tyza Rowan of Australia goes 13th. Hopefully lucky for her with uh, High Star Hero. Tom Watchman, the young Irishman, has been going very strongly as well. Burlock said Alex Matz just after that. Uh, then we head on down to Nal Nasa. Jiminy Cricket goes 19th the order. Uh, Laura Crouch and Con Fu goes 23rd. Natalie Dean, uh, Con Calma next on the list from that point of view. Uh, the German European champion from 2021, Andre Tima and Kodani PS go 30. 
30th. Uh, Carlos San Guerrero, H5 Ganesh Hero Z come into the mix as well for uh, Mexico. And uh, then further down, we see uh, Tim Gredley with his Nations Cup ride with Imperial HBF. Charlotte Jacobs, ring cooler. Mil Sean also to uh, come into the equation here as well. And uh, then further down to Kino Connor, new ride this time with Fomoy, Amy Miller, Cristiano, Sammy Aldehan, and uh, WKD Toronto will take us down to the 49th in the order in total. Uh, so. Uh, nearly set to run. We've had some big winners of this over the last few years. It was Daniel Deusser back in 2021 with Tobago Z. Uh, McLean Ward with Annie HH Azure in uh, 2022. And I say last year was Daniel Coyle and Ivory TCS. Ben Mayer won this with Eureka back in 2014. And uh, I can give you a little more history as we go. But Danny Walmers alongside me uh, to pull me back out and into the present. And here we go yes. with Juan Pablo Haneco and uh, Habab W as our first to go. Danny, really interesting course. We talked a little bit about it in the uh, preview of the track but some really uh, bright interesting fences and some new ones coming up early as well yeah absolutely does one to two there he did about 11 strides number two strong jump here's one of those bright colorful jumps a little bit of a spooky wall you can see the horse looked at it a little bit here he does maybe one more than i actually anticipated i think people were thinking to do one less but makes it through the triple He's out there nice in the six to the black skinny. And now it's left around the turn here. Big oxer with the Liverpool underneath it. Opting to do the five, has A down. He's on the track there for the nine. Steady's up a little bit of the four, just kind of slinks over that one. Now, right-hand turn away from the gate. We're going to see vertical oxer double. And stays on it for six to the Hermes oxer. And then this comes up pretty quick. Bridge jump. Oh, little look at the last. Yeah, a little bit of crooked through that line, but makes it through the five. Actually, very, very good round. Just the one yeah. down coming into those double verticals. Just on the four there, 74.92. So inside the time of 76 for Juan Pablo Janeco of Colombia and Habab W. Two good rounds uh, this week. Just finishing on the uh, four there for uh, Juan Pablo. That was uh, a solid round, actually. Yeah. You know, he handled it really well. I think it walked quite big. Um, they made some adjustments, actually, there. You can see, again, has that down. He did the five. I did walk five and a half. I personally, depending on the horse, of course, you're sitting on, I think that the six into those double verticals is probably the better choice if you have the right ability. Again, those with a very big stride who can be slowing down. It doesn't really matter what number you do. It's all about just coming in slow and balanced to those double verticals. David Cameron of Australia, we saw him onto the uh, lineup for the teams last year as well. Oaks come by chance uh, for the uh, ride by Casiago out of uh, Oaks Milky Way, going back to the uh, Oak Stud breeding. Alice Cameron, of course, of uh, Hilary Scott, uh, who's also on the Australian team. And uh, she was riding Oaks Milky Way. But here is uh, David Cameron, as I say, featured last year. Not on the team last night, but this was uh, another very good looking combination last year as well. Absolutely. They did one less stride there up the first line, but. That was eight on the track. So Juan Pablo did nine. Working out well. Really steadies up there for the six to the skinny. Again, I, not many places on the course to really take a break. There he really steadies up. He tried to steady up there like that. But just, again, having A of that double verticals, I think we're going to see that come down a lot today. Really a rider's kind of line. The horses don't see those avocado-colored uh, poles very well. Hard enough to jump them without it being double verticals. And a little bit set on that half stride coming Whoa. in. Really steadies up. This horse having a huge, huge stride. Absolutely covering the ground tremendously. Just see this? He has to even steady up down the last five. But uh, just with that same jump down as Juan Pablo. But... Pretty solid round. Yeah, just going to finish on the four seventy-two seventy-four for David Cameron and uh, Oaks by chance from that point of view. So uh, let's just see them on the four as well. Time is okay. Uh, like we say, seventy-two seventy-four. So they're coping with that all right. And uh, again, pair that don't get so much exposure into these big classes as well. And so we'll uh, 
again, probably be happy enough with that. Went back to this wall, like I say, Rio wall, based on the pommel horse, actually, Steve Stephen tells me from Rio. Ah, I, didn't, I didn't know that. There you go. Um, and uh, so, Ben Mayer. Ben Mayer, world number two, with uh, point break for uh, Paula Wright and Charlotte Rossiter. And so now with this 10-year-old standing by action breaker, that looks so very effective. It, I can wax lyrical about all his horses all week, but looking forward to seeing point breaks. Point breaks just being moved up now into the big classes, is hitting the right age at 10 and, and just looks so tidy. Coming along great. Look at that beautiful jump there at number two. Ben doing such a good job just bringing these along. Wow, huge jump at the wall. Really stays on the inside track. Whoa, big ride there in. Jumps through that triple great. They're actually jumping the triple better than I expected them to. Yeah. This horse really flying. I think Ben using a little bit of that speed and power to get over the jump. The horse is clearly jumping very carefully, very high. And Ben just wanting a little bit extra speed. There he steadies up, does the one more. Beautiful. Then we see him jump through that double verticals. Great. Gets the four done. Again, this horse really jumping up and away from those poles. Simple there. You can see a little bit of a shift. Ben just putting his leg on, making sure the horse knows where he's going. Nice jump here. Steady's up a little bit for the five. Clears the last wide oxer and beautiful round there for Ben. There we go. It is uh, becoming uh, normal for them. Ben Mayer and uh, point break again. Uh, meets expectations with the clear. Ben, a pass winner, I say, of this Grand Prix back to 2014 uh, with Eureka on that occasion as well. Ben just makes it look simple. I mean, I don't think that that was actually the easiest of the ride. Sometimes we see Ben go around and it looked just really, really like he's a, a, in a different class than a lot of the other riders. And today certainly had effort, but uh, I think he did a beautiful job. The horse jumped incredibly well. Look yeah. at that shape of the jump, high over the jumps. Ben was very precise about everything. And again, this course lending itself towards you needing to actually really think about how everything is connected. It's not uh, one where you ever have a place to breathe. Carly Anty now for the portfolio horses with uh, Heavenly W, the uh, Dutch bed ride by Carvaro FC, as we've seen her go so well with JetBlue. And now Heavenly W having jumped into some of those uh, big five-star weeks as well. An early rail for them, just a little unsteady there, balances back up. Yeah, it just looked like she maybe got a little bit close. That front pole, it is a very square oxer, and it just this horse has a big stride. It just looked like maybe she was just in here. Jumps through that triple beautifully. Steady's up here. Peek down for a second, make sure everything. Tack and gear was fine. Good shot there. She'll do the five. Steady's up good. That was a well-executed five. Again, it's a little bit riskier doing the five, but with a horse like this that's very big, that maybe doesn't have that easy adjustability like we saw with Ben's, this one. Definitely uh, doing the five, but she did it very, very well. That was how you need to execute it. Again, a little bit the style with this horse, cantering disunited on the cross canter, but just a little bit how the horse is comfortable, and Carly just ignores it. The bridge jump great. Don't know if I should call that a wall or a plank. It's actually it's, it is a, a plank, thin little there. plank on the it top of it. It's not a wall. It's uh, there into third place so far, just on the four. Uh, 73 65, just four there for Carly Anthony and Heavenly W. Yes, it's, it's basically two split planks yeah. on the top of that bridge. It looks like one solid kind of jump, but it's yeah. a delicate little like gate lattice plank. Yeah, the horse just having the front pole there on the way up. So here you can see again the five. She did a great job with her body control. She does the big, the open five, but then got there kind of on a nice balanced steady counter. Take us uh, to now um, Mario Delorier and uh, with uh, Bartley and two, his Olympic ride for uh, Mario in the Wishing Well Farm in New York. This uh, Holsteiner by uh, Clarimo. Uh, really consistent pairing and interesting, not on the team this week. They've been on the team a good few times as well through to uh, Olympic Games, like I mentioned, too. And uh, for them. This consistency is often their watchword, so we'll see how they fare here now on this 15-year-old. Oh, a little bit of habit. a block off that wall. We hadn't seen that come down yet, but uh, it's a new wall. Just looked like got there, maybe shifted a little bit. You can see the block that came down was really on the right side of the jump. 
maybe just a little bit shift, lost a little bit of height to get over that. Bartolino, so experienced. Definitely not spooking at something like that. So he opts for the five also. Very, again, very experienced horse. It's hard when you have a greener horse to do something like that. It's harder, but with these really experienced ones, that is working out quite well. Such a tremendous partnership for Mario over the years. They know each other so well. And like our time allowed is not really causing too much trouble. Clears that plank jump beautifully. A little bit holding her straight there. Gets over it. Finish up just with that early fault at the wall. Yeah, just unfortunately the Rio wall costing them finishing on four there at 72-66. Uh, four there for Mario Delorier and uh, Bardolina two. So still holding at the one clear in the very early stages. Five gone of this uh, $200,000 JTWG uh, four-star Grand Prix. And uh, so from uh, Mario Delorier. Little look back here at yeah, the wall. Yeah, we can see. Yeah, look, just shifted a little bit right there on takeoff. Was kind of angling it maybe to get a little bit on the inside track for that eight into the triple, but uh, just kind of leaned into that right side. And then clears the last there. But that's an unfortunate fault to have at the wall. He was looking at the scoreboard. You wonder if he even realized he had yeah. it down. Well, again, it's, it's light on those bricks. Yeah, you tiny little blocks. You don't even necessarily feel it. Alberto Michel, Joint de Cannabis, was the horse he actually rode in the Nations Cup last night as part of the team. And uh, for him, it was a little bit of an up and down night. Uh, yeah, jumped that first round with just one down. It was actually a super round. And then uh, just looked like the horse got a little bit green at this level in the second round. They had a couple of miscommunications and good jump there over the wall. So he does the one more into the triple. It seems like it's working out, either staying out and steady in that nine or in on the eight. And it's funny, actually. We've seen that Lugano uh, light pale blue color jumps come down so much throughout the season here at the Winter Equestrian Festival. But today with the triple, it's actually not causing as much trouble as I expected. And they are just jumped in and landed a little bit far past the track. And... Uh, past that takeoff point a little bit at B and just not able to get over that. Again, this horse just 10 years old. I haven't seen it jump so much at this high level, so certainly a little bit green for this. Beautiful jumps. Clearly very, very scopy horse. And there just look like, ooh, and Abby is down, but... Horse looks okay, and Abby is back up on his feet. And just looked like the horse actually took a little bit of a peek at it. I think he was thinking that the horse was just going to leave one stride before, got a little bit green at that jump, and uh, unfortunately, horse just didn't quite know what he wanted. Abby just taking a bit. Yeah, it looks like Abby's just... To recover. Just giving, it, just giving him a moment. Just going to get the team to check him out. Horse is absolutely fine. But uh, Abby's just... I mean, he's sitting there taking his jacket off and so forth. He's not... Yeah, he's uh, just taking a little bit of yeah. a break. they got to rebuild that jump as well. Horse is back into someone's hands. Uh, actually, it was quite a solid round. I think just sometimes when they're a little bit green, they just take a look at the jump. And we've seen a couple of horses take a look at that. It's a new jump this uh, this late in season. They haven't seen it. Yeah. It's very airy, nothing on the bottom. Yeah, he's sitting up, drinking a bottle of water, just getting his breath back, as I say. And I think just, yeah, obviously just pinged, so <laughs> he hit the ground sometimes a little bit hard. Takes yeah, exactly. Out and it is hot out there today. It is hot and humid. And uh, easy to get the wind knocked out of you a little bit. And so just the team just having a chat with him. They say the medical cart's just coming in to check over him. We'll just give him a ride back and yeah, check him over. Exactly. But they say he's, he's sitting up and chatting and drinking water and handing over his hat and all the other things that would say he's, he's not too bad. But they say he's obviously had 
the wind knocked out of him for a, yeah. uh, a minute or two. So we'll just give him a bit of a breather there. So let's just remind you, Ben Mayer on a clear with uh, point break in the early stages here. Uh, we've had uh, four of them on four faults so far, Danny. So they're, they're just picking up one fence here and there. It's not Yeah, exactly. Major, and actually, we've good. seen uh, faults at the double verticals come down the most so far. So again, we're still pretty early in this class. But they're handling it better than I expected. I think uh, it walked quite big. They did make some adjustments once the course walk was going. And um, just with some feedback. and So they made a couple adjustments. And I think, uh, I think we're definitely going to see a couple more clear today in the class. Yeah, Abby just going to get a lift home. and yeah, He's all right. I see yeah. him pop himself into the golf yeah, cart. Yeah, he's... he's he didn't want to do that long walk back to the gate. <laughs> he's a tough soul as well, so he must have say take a bit of a bit of a bump there. But yeah, exactly. Um, he's he's got himself up in there and he's sitting up there and chatting to everyone. So he's he's obviously okay to an extent, but just going to say they'll get him get him checked out from that point of view. And uh, then we'll be going on to Roberto Turan, who I think has just headed out from it as well. Probably to have another yeah, fence. Yeah, probably going to jump. Maybe go jump in. one more jump in the warm-up there's a little bit of a longer pause and sometimes when you have something like that unexpectedly ha unexpectedly happen you want to just head back out maybe get yourself one more warm-up jump just so the horse is sharp sometimes when they wait for a little bit too long they can uh it can make it easy to actually have the first jump down yeah because they're just a little bit they almost cool down a little just bit sort of switch off a little bit yeah and you want to just go back out there and kind of just wake them back up and, uh, all right abby is on that golf cart and yeah. head out and Roberto will be back in just a minute. So Ben showing everybody how it's done with the one clear so far. We'll be back underway shortly. Well, we're just going to take a uh, breather for just a few moments' time, and to say they're just going to send a tractor, and I think as well, just to just to cover those tracks up, and they'll give Roberto just a moment to get ready, and uh, it is going to be back in. So we're just going to take a breather for a minute, and then we'll be uh, back underway with our next, which will be Roberto Turan. Can Jumper make you a show jumper expert? With Jumper, explore the latest event results, discover top horses and riders, and follow your favorites. Jumper delivers data from around the world, so you're always the most informed. Download now and take a guesswork at show jumper with Jumper. Well, we're going a little quicker than we are, so we're actually going to the hand rakes with a little bit of good, good old-fashioned manual, la manual labour out there. <laughs> so actually, uh, Roberto Turan is all set to go, and uh, Roberto then uh, with uh, DSP Callas and uh, the mayor that's uh, German bred by uh, Cas Kenny II. Uh, Roberto uh, going superbly well individually at the Pan Am Games. Mentioning the Pan Am fence wasn't on this horse on that occasion. That's uh, Desuk Tuf, and has been giving this horse much more exposure in the last few weeks, especially here in Wellington into the bigger classes to be supporting. Good shot, one to two. They're kind of just staying on that ten. We did see one eleven. Nice jump at the wall. Just stays on it. Middle to middle to the triple. Again, B of the triple has those solid colored pale blue rails. The other A and C have stripes. But again, triple not causing much trouble yet. He's looking good here. With a big jump like this, I think he'll do the five. And he will, certainly. But unfortunately, has that back down behind. Actually had A and B down. Again, I'm not loving that five. We're seeing most people do the five, but I'm not loving it. And there, he just looked like the horse was a little sucked back behind him, coming around the turn. And uh, he just couldn't quite get him to follow. He was trying to move up to the vertical there. And the horse, as he was adding leg, was just kind of going against him and going a little bit backwards. So he was trying to add leg and do that, but instead the canter was going a little bit up and down. 
but gets a nice good shot the second time around. He'll have the back pull, but looking like maybe Roberto is going to call it a day. And they will retire within our round. But again, just on the one clear so far. And uh, having a couple of yeah, unfortunately, stalling rounds. Yeah, unfortunately, just that refusal coming there. But he said he's, he knows what's coming in there with uh, what he's moving up with with his horse at the moment. So, unfortunately, heading on out there too for an early, early exit. But we will continue to see more. Another great combination, a new combination coming up next. Excited to see how they handle this. Okay, let's take a look then with uh, Caroline Mawinney, winner of our uh, U25 semi-final Grand Prix earlier on this week as well with Carsey Z, the uh, gelding by uh, Cartino Z. Again, just 18 years of age. Yep. Uh, trains with Jessica Mendoza, both with their base here in the United States as well, down in Wellington. She started off in California and she's done really well. She's a good, effective, fast rider. Yeah, absolutely. Just still a young rider. She did win that U25 on a wonderful mare of hers, a little gray horse that was just spectacular. She was very fast that night. Again, this a newer po combination for the two of them, but it's been a really good combination so far. There, B coming down. I was just talking about how B at those solid rails. She looked a little bit far off A maybe, had a lot of pace at B. When you have a solid colored poles in the middle of a triple, it makes it a little bit harder to jump. The horses don't really see it the same way as they do with the stripe poles. They see the stripe poles better than they see the solid ones. And uh, B actually quite tall today. Sets this up well. They're just having the top pole of the Liverpool vertical as well. We haven't seen that come down, but I don't think that that's the easiest course, uh, jump to jump on the course. And coming out of that double is actually, uh, with those green and gold colored stripes, it's very wide coming out of that double. And we've seen that back pull now come down a couple of times. Steady's up for the last, but uh, gets over that, but picks up a few on the course. Yeah, finish on a total of 12, 74, 59. And uh, so three down for Caroline but winning uh, with Carsey Delaby. But it's say, been a good week in the U25s as well. And, and again, she keeps moving into the fours, uh, four stars and so forth, moving up. She was only doing the two stars sort of last year. I yeah, mean, exactly. she's only 18. Yeah, she's, she's really she's making been really that step up and been very, very consistent and solid. Again, just small little things here, fine-tuning at that at the higher level. Daniel Blumen now and uh, Gemma W, the horse he rode to win the Toronto World Cup last year as well, previous Southampton Classic winner as well. And uh, part of the team last night for Israel. Jumped the first round, didn't jump the second, so again, should be fresh and ready to go for this uh, Dutch Brent Mayer by uh, Lua Dam. One clear on the board at this stage with uh, Ben Mayer and uh, point break. I thought Gemma jumped great last night. Um, really... It was a beautiful round, and uh, I thought she looked like she was really in fresh form. And I think they're uh, probably one of the favorites in today's class. Yeah. Yeah, this might be one to start to square up to Ben Mayer. We'll see. Jumped a super round last night into round one. It's coming from Ashley Bond and from uh, Daniel Blumen. Oh, and there just looked like she almost shifted yeah, to the right shifted. and caught the flag a little bit. And then the flag kind of pulled uh, the top bricks off. Made it look a little bit more dramatic than it was. Yeah, exactly. Steady's up here. But again, we just have one clear at the moment. So if he can stay on the four and be quick enough. So he steadies up for the six. Did that maybe a tiny bit late. He kind of landed and waited a stride before he steadied up, but he got it done. Steady's up for the four there. She jumped that well. Let's see how he jumps this. A little reach coming out. Beautiful jump at the Hermes. Handling that fence without any trouble. Just a, a little, little bit, bit of move far up. off the yeah. last, but adds a little extra leg. So just that one at the wall, similarly to Mario Delorier. Just the wall. So just the wall. It's uh, four. Here we go. Another shot at it. As you say, they just made that shift yeah, just to the looked. right. She shifted real hard and just caught the, the end of it behind. Oh, just behind by the looks of it, yeah. Yeah. But then almost looked as though his, his foot was going yeah, towards the flag as well. Yeah, actually caught the flag. She shifted super hard right. 
as they took off. He was kind of in the middle on takeoff, and then just as she took off, she really shifted. So from there to Vanessa Hood and the take two LLC of Wellington's uh, Vins. The uh, gelding by uh, Vagrant Z, the former World Cup finalist. Very well through the uh, Major League shows as well. And again, stepped back into the top flight competition the last few years. One clear so far with Ben Mayer and uh, Point Break as part of this $200,000 uh, Nations Cup Grand Prix. Again, been working with Norman Del Joyo recently. Been really having a lot of good results at this higher level. Now again, fine nice. the wall. Right in the middle there. The right wall. in the middle. They haven't seen that wall all week. We should point that out as well. Yeah, absolutely. That is a brand new jump, which is actually not something you normally see for them to pull out a jump that they haven't seen at all all week. She does have the top pole of the black skinny. Just looked like she got there a little bit yeah. early. That is a bit of steady six and uh, kind of aiming right into the scoreboards, which are also black. And I think uh, Porsche just didn't quite look at the top pole there. She does the five, has A coming in. Again, just a little bit too much speed off that five strides there. And then also having the front pole of the net jets. And there at the Liverpool horse just looked like he didn't really rock back and jump around yeah. at, kind of jump right into the top pole. No. And again, this horse That's very, up. very scopey, but just looking like It's maybe, just not their day at the moment, yeah, is it? Yeah, not her day today. She's been having really super results, but it's just not working out today. Well, unfortunately, yep, looks as though she's going to turn and retire there. We'll see. Well, or Might take a loop back here. We'll see. Just making a little hang fire. organizational circle. Yep. Jumps beautifully there over the Hermes. Get it finished. That's better. Yeah. And again, I think for her own experience and for the horse to have a good positive experience, yep. she jumped those last three beautifully. So you know it's not going to be your day, but sometimes you want to finish up on a good note. She did a good job. She made a circle and then just said, okay, let me take my time and jump these last three jumps as well Absolutely. as Absolutely. Finish it on a good night note from that point of view. Uh, here through the Lugano. the triple beautifully. But then here, and then comes through here. But we're seeing a lot of the horses cut down a little bit at that back pole of B. That's not the first time we've seen that. And, of course, A of those double verticals. Certainly the trouble point. As Steve Steven said when we were walking the course last night, that uh, he puts the jumps there, and he was thinking if they were going to work. And uh, they work. <laughs> seems like they're working. They work. They're working for him. Absolutely, Vasco Flores. The uh, Vasco Flores, up to you, up to the riders to sort it out. Uh, Puerto Rico's uh, rider with uh, Cosmona of the horse Strant and Murano, horse that he rode at the uh, Pan Am Games uh, last year as well, has built up a nice partnership with this horse. Starts over the Jack JTWG box. So just a nice little starting point for them. Gets pretty big fences straight early on into the course with that uh, Kubota second fence there, 150, 160. Absolutely. But this has been a really good partnership for them. A horse that was formerly seen under Gia Rinaldi. And uh, Gia helped bring this horse up to a little bit. And there the horse just lost a little bit of power. Yeah. Jumped A and B, really backed up at B and kind of slowed down and then was just really far away and a little bit dead on takeoff at C, just not able to get across that back pole. Opting to do the five, beautifully done there. Again, if executed correctly, that five is absolutely fine. Whoa, Ooh, and that no. just looked like a miscommunication. He was thinking the horse was gonna do one more stride and the horse uh, left a stride early. Yeah, he's gonna raise a hand and say, we're retiring there for Vasco Flores and Cosmona. Yeah, I think that was, that was just purely a miscommunication as to where the takeoff point was. I think uh, after having a couple down already, thought calling it a day. Yeah, not happening. So, uh, Jordan Coyle, the Land Farms uh, Shakalino, the gelding by Shaco Blue. Now, we saw this horse into the five star just the other day as well. Yes. Uh, very new ride for uh, Jordan. We saw him, of course, into the top three as well, into the uh, early big Grand Prix with For Gold. And really just building this partnership, but it went pretty well. Uh, from what we've seen so far, and in really using the circuit to, to build it together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were clear with the time fault in that five-star. Um, 
We thought, well, I think a bunch of us all thought he was actually going to jump for gold because that horse had jumped the five star week five uh, double clear. But uh, he went with Chocolino and it was a beautiful round in the five star last yep. week. Give him, look at that. Nice little treat to start <laughs> the round. Maybe a little bribery encouragement. <laughs> it's like, come on, horse, if I give you a little treat, will you jump clear for me? But uh, with Jordan in the irons, I think uh, they got a pretty good shot. Yeah. Both here to enjoy it. So uh, one clear out of the uh, pack so far. Time allowed is 76 seconds. They've been coping with that so far, but has uh, been a little bit up and down. Had quite a few fours um, early on. Let's get back in the groove with Jordan Coyle of Ireland. Off he goes. This is a big horse, very powerful horse. Jumps the jumps easily. Nice. Ooh, no. I was going to say it was right nice up there in the eight, but horse did not like it. Let's see. He'll come back around. It was an unexpected thing. I actually thought Jordan was getting there well. He moved up right away. No. No. Horse just not feeling it today. I don't know if it's the big Lugano plank at the bottom there with the three in a row. It's a lot to see for the horses. Just uh, not but, feeling But it. again, that's a little bit of can come out of a newer partnership of going, okay, these are, these are things yeah, exactly. we've got to go just work on. Just working on that communication yeah. between the two of them. Uh, Ties are Owen now. And uh, for the Australian rider, it's High Star Hero for Michael and Wendy Smith of Middleburg, Virginia. She was also on the teams with uh, Hailita last night uh, for the Australians. And uh, Thaisa now is based out here in the US, in Middleburg from that point of view, and really built a nice string up. We watched this horse earlier on this week um, yep. going so well. It went very well here last year as well. Uh, follows the Darko line of breeding. Going to be really interesting to see how they cope with this here this, uh, this morning. We're still morning. Yeah, exactly. It's morning. Still, still morning. Got, We're not get, at noon yet. It's getting used to a Grand Prix in the morning. <laughs> I know, right? We're so used to them at night. But this horse, such a big, scopey jumper. Again, when we talk about scope, we mean real power, ability to jump, the height and the width. And this horse, just tremendous powerhouse. Look at that big jump there. She had a nice little gap on takeoff to stay away from that square front pole. Squared off, that's not actually square. Keeps the connection in here. She did that really well. She actually rode that beautifully. Thought she really kept the power up and then boxed it so that he really got to the base and could fire off of A. Takes her time a little bit here, a little bit wider than some of our other riders, but gets a beautiful shot. And steadies up, beautiful jump through there. Does the five easily. Had a nice space and gap there. Have to sit up here, gets over the Liverpool. Now she has to set up for the final bit of the course. Jumps A, gets across the back pole of B, stays on it to this oxer, and now she just needs to stay steady here. Let him jump the plank. Time is going to be close. It's going to be outside. She was it. a little bit wide, I thought, back from five to six. And uh, she will pick up four on the clock, but a beautiful jumping round there for Tiza. 79-14, finish on a score of four, uh, Tyser Rowan and uh, High Star Hero. So four all on time. Uh, but again, I mean, as you can see by her reaction, she's very happy. Very with happy, I think. Uh, she's been having just kind of a fault here and there, and she's been trying to put it all together. And She took her time, but actually I think she's not a bad choice on her part. She wants to make sure to clear the jumps. Again, you can always speed up a little bit over time, but clearing the jumps is priority number one, and I thought the horse jumped beautifully today. Really took its time. And, uh, well done to Tizer. So, uh, Tizer going close on the four, but it is uh, Daniel Blumen fastest of the four falters that sits in second place at the moment. Bardley in a two after that with Mario Delorier. Oaks come by chance with David Cameron just on the uh, four as well, and top five for Carly Anthony on four. Ben Mayer at the top of the pack with a zero. Berlick said for the uh, Coolmore show jumping. And uh, Tom Watchman. Uh, Tom, in terrific form through the U25s, also went very well at uh, the World Equestrian Centre up in Ocala the last few weeks, but down here with the team. Super horse that's been yeah. uh, ridden through. I think Brother Max has been riding this one at various times, again, between he and, and Keen O'Connor. Absolutely. Trainer, but I mean, this big is jump a tremendously two. powerful horse. 
Ooh, touched a brick of the wall. It shifted forward but did not fall, so that doesn't count as a penalty. But this horse, tremendous, jumped the Olympics with Simone de Lest, yeah. and it is just what a powerhouse of a horse. I'm sure Tom is thrilled to have the ride while his brother has been out of commission for a little bit. And he's back in commission now, which he's is good. He's back in commission, but he's, but he he's coming slowly. While, so. He's been coming literally this week. He may take yeah. the animal back. Opting to do the steady six. And now this is a very big horse with a big stride, but I think they want to contain it and not let it jump forward too much because it can certainly jump very forward. And I think that was a very smart choice there to do the six to the double verticals. And then a little bit of a hesitation stutter stride at the stride at the Liverpool. A little bit similar there at yeah. A, but actually helping him slow that jump down. Again, horse has a really big stride. A couple more to go. He's riding great. Think he's okay on that time. Yeah, he's fine. And look at that beautiful there round there. Well done to Tom and Berlux. That was absolutely spectacular. Yep, and uh, puts it together nicely. And uh, it is going then for a second clear to Watchman and uh, Berlux. Said, watch out for the Irish teenager. The Ireland, of course, winning the Nations Cup last night. Uh, they've got another shot to throw their hand in with a different one this time. Here's the wall. Again, shifted a little bit right, yep. but uh, made, managed to stay within those flags. And there, Tom did a super job to, to exactly listen to, I'm sure, what his coach, Keen O'Connor, said. There you can see the horse take a little bit of a stutter step as it took out. It actually lay, left a little bit extra space coming in, which helped the jump. Yeah, no, absolutely. But they built up a nice partnership now together, Tom Watchman and Berlick said. So yeah. it gives us clear round number two, Alex Matz and Didi Matz's uh, junior Cannon. Dutch break gelding by Cannon, as you'd expect uh, for this 10-year-old for uh, Alex. Alex, having gone so well previously in the likes of the Hampton Classic, he's been over for Nations Cup action in uh, to Europe as well before now too. This horse also a former ride. It was at, in Germany, the horse, and uh, David Will rode it as yep. well as Richard Vogel before. Having B down, we've seen that come down another time as well. I did walk it and think that that solid color poles were going to, going to be difficult. Every time we see that, a lot of times we'll see those B of a triple actually be white poles, and that's always very, very difficult to jump. But any time that the poles are different than A and, and yeah. C, it makes it a bit of an optical illusion for the horse. But, and then we're seeing the back pole of the net jets come down. We've seen the front pole come down and cause a little bit of trouble. The oxers are very wide on the course today. Actually, I think they're quite tall and quite wide. But we're seeing a bunch of back poles come down, and I think that's because of the width. A little bit wider than maybe some of the other big classes have been. Steadies up really to the last. Jumps back around that one well. Clears the widest fence, the claws, uh, which is the last uh, without too much trouble. Finish on a total of uh, 12 there for Alex Matz this time. As you say, they just start to get forward through there yeah. and just then go on through the second part. We, we found before when it's been a double that they, they look through to that Lugano yeah. um, filler as well on the other side. And you say not putting too much bold color in the middle exactly. means that you just tend to coast through it. Exactly, and in this case, for A and for C have the big Lugano plank at the base. But uh, B is just four solid colored poles. So it's, it's a, there's like a lot for the horses to see. It just looks like a sea of poles. And uh, they are seaside colored also. <laughs> Those pale blue. Le Legano's wonderful but pale blue colors there as well. Pow I'm not sure if it's powder blue or what, what, yeah, the, powder what blue. the Pantone color is there. We'll yeah, exactly. explore that one. It's uh, a pretty color. Not too hard, but we'll explore it. Uh, <laughs> Sean Wordley now and uh, Champion League for Della Wordley for the New Zealand rider based here in the U.S. as well. Champion League, the Hanoverian by uh, Cador 5 is the 11-year-old for the a uh, rider who's been through to the Olympics in uh, 2008 and uh, major championships before now. The most experienced uh, possibly uh, for the team. But actually, I'm going to backtrack on that because there's Morris Bateson on the team who's 70 years of age this I week. And he he's done well. But in sure. terms of he's been through to Olympic Games. So we, we can balance all of that up. I know. Amazing story there for Maurice. He uh, it came over here to compete and uh, for this Nations Cup last night. It's nice to see him. Sean jumped on the team. Had a few down last night, but it's jumping really well here right now. It is a very sporty horse to see. Yeah. 
And he's by Cador 5. Cador 5 is a younger stallion. Nice, easy horse himself. Not really a famous stallion, but uh, we certainly do see some breeding coming out of him. And this horse, very classic looking. Sort of a beautiful shape stallion. And he's looking good so far. Two left to jump. Strong ride there at the plank. Time as is long fine. as they don't spook at that plank, they seem to be jumping it well. And look at that. Excellent rebound from last night. That was a Absolutely good recovery there from Sean Wordley and Champion Lee. Looking exactly that there. We see absolute delight in it. and uh, Happy and giving the horse a big pet. Well yeah. deserved. Yeah, absolutely. Showing the class that they've got. And that that's the frustration sometimes if you have a round that's not quite right. You go, I know this is better than this. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I know the horse straight has back it in. in. Yeah, straight back in there with Champion League. Uh, will they lift the trophy today? We will see. Beth Underhill now with the Rain family's uh, Nika van der Bishop and uh, for this Belgian bred mare by uh, Emerald NOP. Uh, coming up next, little uh, of uh, Sean Wordley's round here. Very nicely over the Hermes fence from that Not point of view. Not causing much trouble at all at that Hermes fence, actually. We haven't seen that come down yet. It's uh, been jumping beautifully. And then here you could see Sharn was a nice, strong ride. Yeah, Beth then with the horse that she rode for a Team Silver at the Pan Am Games last year in Santiago. So she's seen the Pan Am fence that we see a little bit later before. Yep. Both have. And again... Don't know if she's seen this wall. She however. wasn't in Rio, but uh, she doesn't do a bad job at it. There you no, go. No, beautiful jump there, actually. The horse was really sharp off of it. Good ride there. You can see Beth add a little bit of leg at sea to help just encourage the horse to jump really across sea. And then again, this horse can be a little bit of a slower mover. You can see Beth really put her leg on, move forward with the gallop, keep coming out of the turn. Oh, unfortunately, having the back pull of that, I actually thought that oxer would cause a little bit more trouble than it has, but uh, just didn't quite get across the back. She's looking solid here. Jumps in a little bit, shifts left there. But that actually helps her stay on the outside track to fit the six a little bit. Here's this jump she's seen before. Gets right to the base of it. Jumps beautifully around. It really kicked out behind. Clears the last, but unfortunately with that one down to the back pole of the orange and yellow oxer at number six. Yeah, it just finishes on 175.06. A nice round overall for Beth Underhill and uh, Nika van der Bishop just missing out there. Uh, so they join a list of those on four. She goes into ninth place. And uh, for the four falters, we're looking from uh, fourth place uh, down to basically tenth at this point. And uh, then with the three clears at the top with Ben Mayer, Sean Wordley and uh, Tom Watchman as the clears so far. All right, let's move on to our next one. Yeah, Michaela Langmeyer is the uh, next up with Mamusa van der Rollebeek. Again, has been uh, competing in some of our bigger shows in the last few weeks in the five stars to get some good experience for this 23-year-old rider. And so Michaela with a rafty farm of California's uh, Belgian red mare by uh, Castellino van der Hele. Again, some of the biggest tracks that this pair have jumped in the last few weeks as well. But now just, just getting into the groove of that. And again, the opportunity here to keep getting back in there. Again, unblinking at our Rio-colored wall. Yeah, absolutely. They're not really looking at the wall so much. But the course is sort of bookended by those two very bright jumps. Both seem like walls. One, of course, the plank at the bridge jump, but then the early wall. And yellow, if anyone uh, is curious, yellow is the hardest horse uh, color for horses to see. Yeah, they are Horses uh, don't have the best eyesight, almost a little bit colorblind. And yellow is absolutely the most difficult for them to see and judge. Course designers using yellow a lot of times uh, because of that. There we go. Making can. it trickier. I, I've heard different versions, but I've heard, yeah, I mean, yellow is a tough one. It's on the four at the moment uh, for Michaela. Have you heard other colors? I've heard a couple of colors on the way, but I say I'm waiting for the definitive. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> but but, but, yellow, but, yellow, but yellow keeps coming up, absolutely. Yeah. For sure, yellow is hard. Yeah, for sure, yellow is I will say the pale blue seems to be true. The, yeah. the pastel colors. Yeah. So solid round there for Michaela. 
just uh, put that one down. Yeah, four jumping three time and 78-17 uh, for Mikhail Langmeyer and uh, Mimosa van der Rollebeek. But yes, lots of studies going into, into that at the moment as well. Yeah, so. curious. Uh, again, horses' eyesight, not only a little bit colorblind, but because their eyes are on so much on the side of their head, it makes uh, depth perception very difficult yeah. for them, which is where the riders come into play, right? You need, the riders are there to help place them properly, and then uh, the horse can use their natural power and scope and ability to jump over them, but the rider's got to put them there. Got to put it there. There we go. Uh, finishing with just time to add there for Michaela, four and three. Uh, now Nassar, Jiminy Cricket uh, for the uh, rider for Egypt, the Evergate, sta Evergate Stables, Westphalian by uh, Colestus for uh, last year's Queen's Cup winner up in Calgary. And uh, again, uh, right the way through to Olympics with Igor, but Jiminy Cricket getting uh, more outings as well into the big classes now too. Yeah, absolutely, and a very sporty horse. Niall's such a good rider, such a pleasure to watch. Ah. Unfortunately there, again, we're seeing B come down. I had a feeling that was going to be a troublesome spot on the course, and we are absolutely seeing it come down more and more. And again, you know, we've seen eight, we've seen nine into the triple, and then we've seen A there in the double verticals come down as well. So combinations proving to be the hardest spots on the course today and that's actually very typical of steve stephen built uh, and designed courses i will say i've watched his courses and ridden many of his courses and uh, combinations are always some of the hardest points on the course certainly very challenging the way that he sets the distances to them as well as how he builds them themselves the distances inside of the doubles as well as the material used He's on a score of 8, 75, 75, uh, two down this time for Nal Nassar and uh, Jiminy Cricket. Uh, so not quite to be for them today. Let's uh, maybe take another look through that triple combination and see how that fair, that middle part is, is catching them so far. They're on the way out. And then here again. Yeah, you can see the horse just kind of dropped his shoulder as he took off there and didn't quite get enough height to be able to get over those delicate verticals. You really need the horse to jump back and around and curl over them, and he just jumped a little bit into it. Luis Pedro Biraben and Miguel Medeiros and his own Chaco Bumpy for this uh, now 14-year-old mare by uh, Chaco Blue that we've seen plenty of times uh, in the podium finishes here in uh, Wellington. Good opportunity here for the Argentinian to join the three clears so far as part of this $200,000 uh, Nations Cup class. Big jump there at number two, really moving on the pace. And then steadies up for the wall. No, no. No, and then it looked like he was just right there, and then the horse maybe hesitated to think, oh, I don't really know what I'm looking at. And again, it's a wall that has no wings. You know, the flags are there, so it creates a little bit of height. But there's no wings, meaning there's no standards on the side of it. So it's very hard for the horse to sight into the middle of the wall and really understand what they're supposed to do. And again, that's that's what the course designer is uh, testing. Whoop. Ooh, that was some athleticism to get over that. You could see the horse was really shifting and really dragging him past the distance and uh, kind of took his eye off it. But And then just getting a little bit of trouble there at the Liverpool. Yeah, you can see it just looks like they're having some like uh, control issues. I think uh, he's wanting the horse to listen a little bit, and the horse just kind of giving him some discussion. Yeah, unfortunately just uh, getting a little bit uh, out of sorts for the pair of them by that point and deciding to uh, call it a day for uh, Luis Pedro Biraben and uh, Chaco Bumpy. They've jumped only plenty of big classes, and when it's not your day, it's not your day. So uh, holds at three clears so far. Tom Watchman, Sean Wordley, and uh, Ben Mayer, Great Britain, New Zealand and uh, Ireland uh, for those so far. Coco Faith now, the 23-year-old uh, with Aventador 5, the hillside farm of Connecticut. Went so well through U25 career. And uh, now this year again, stepping back into the big classes with uh, Aventador. Now we've got, uh, how far are we through? 22 uh, through in our class of uh, 49 in total in the first round of this JTWG. Uh, Nations Cup Grand Prix. Certainly proving to be a difficult class out there today. Three clear so far. They've been three very, very good rounds. Um, of course, Ben Mayer, 
and Tom Watchman and then Sharn Wardley giving a great performance. But uh, I think we'll see a couple more clears. But this is no walk in the park today. I think it's taking a lot of jumping. And, and it's spread. And it's spread across the middle. We're seeing faults kind of everywhere. And uh, like I said, it's a course where jumps just come up really quick. There's very little places for you to take a breath. And they're big, solid jumps. So it's certainly requiring a lot of precision, but also a lot of natural power out of the horses as well. Big scope tests today. Good shot there. She rode that well to the wall. Simple through the triple. She did a good job there to sit up at that skinny. Again, with the triple, when you have the skinny after it, it's important just to use your upper body to slow it down. She lands, moves up for the five, so then she could be slowing down right at the end. She did that very well. She really had to move up in the five, but she did it right away so that the last stride she could steady again, which is the only way to do that. You just can't be pushing coming into those double verticals. Nicely through the double now to this yeah, MS. She's looking really good. She's giving a super ride here. Time is going to be close. Yeah, she is a little bit on that edge. Ten seconds left to get to the finish line. She might get there, but it's going to be she's close. She's going to be okay. And Ooh, clears the last. Little last. Yeah, 74 2 1. Good. Look at that. Beaming Adding smile. Ready. Well done. And uh, Coco Faith at Events Door 5. Just coming down nicely down that last line as well. Like we started to look at the clock, but she just kept coming to it. She, yeah. she had the right pace to it and got it done. Exactly. And again, because these lines are all so connected, once you're a little bit off that pace, it's, it's very hard to make it up because there's not that many places. But she did a good job to just stay very smooth to the last few jumps. And uh, that was a great ride there for Coco. Yeah, so uh, four clears out there as we see the shot at the last. Good confident shot there. Just a little touch on the pole on the way through but uh, just leaves that tickling uh, timber in the cups. So it is Adrian Sterling now in the Starlight Farms at Benny's Legacy for this uh, horse that she's ridden through to World Cup wins. Plenty of experience with this one. 16 years of age now, Benny. And uh, for the Starlight Farms of uh, Connecticut as well. Now again, this should be a horse she has confidence in to attack this track. Absolutely, what a partnership this has been over the years. I thought Benny jumped uh, a really good round earlier in the week. And he's getting a little bit older and, ooh, just looking like he didn't like the wall. Again, always amazing when you see horses that are so experienced and have jumped all over the place. And uh, he just didn't like what no. that looked like. But Adrian does the right thing and says, don't worry about it. Don't worry. I think she, the horse, she really recognized that the horse is just a little bit scared. She's going to come back around and just jump number two again yeah. and uh, not try to make a big issue of it. And she knows the horse. He's older now. And he just, I think, was just genuinely a little bit afraid of it. And uh, she did a good job. Just give him a little so pet and say, it's all right, buddy. I know you're afraid, but uh, it's going to be okay. Yeah, we won't worry about it. So, uh, unfortunately, they head on out. And uh, Adrian Stern been his legacy uh, not to be this time. Staying with a... Uh, See, she's got a smile on her face. It's just, just yeah. wasn't happening today. It is today. what it is, right? It is I mean, what she, it is. She knows the horse, and she said, all right, well, this is not going to be our class. Uh, we'll wait for another one. Uh, this combination have had plenty of classes together for the World 24. Uh, Laura Crouch and the Surprise Farms Con Fu, winners last year, into the Horsewear Island Grand Prix as well, previously here. Lovely combination together. Again, a little bit older horse at 17 years of age. And again... Should be free to have a good run at this. Yeah, absolutely. This horse just such a long time partnership with Laura. And I was chatting with Laura with a couple of people last night. We were watching the Nations Cup and we were just saying how Laura is just so unbelievable at this. She's just one hell of a rider. Yes. She can ride any kind of horse and she can win on any kind of horse. It's just such a talent to watch what she can do. You know, it's not so common that people can ride colder horses, hotter horses, and uh, older ones, younger ones, and she just is able to do it on all of them. And just so good with her nerves, under the pressure for the Nations Cup. She had a very good solid rounds last night. 
again. This partnership she knows really well. Beautifully done there in the six. That's exactly why it works out so well. Yeah. We love to see excellent execution and then rewarded with proper jumping. That's what you're going for. Oh, what a shame. Just jumped a little bit into it. Yeah. She actually steadied up for the four, I thought, well. But horse just jumped a little bit low and into that front. Into the top pole. Good right here. Look how beautifully he jumps that. Steadies up and gets over the last. What a shame. That was actually a beautifully executed round. Just the four there, 76 16. It's uh, just one down. Flora Crack this time in Kon Fu, finishing into 12th place as it stands at the moment. Just the uh, second part of that related distance down by the International Club. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, look there. here. You can see it again. Yeah. Just Wasn't too much a wrong with it. Into it. Yeah. What can I say? Sometimes they just jump too low can come up with lots of reasons and lots of excuses and you just have a fence down sometimes, sometimes you just it. have one down they just jump a little too low i thought she rode that well she kept them straight she set up the four well just didn't jump over it. and everybody tries but sometimes it just doesn't work exactly and so natalie dean we saw having a final conversation down there in the in gate with uh, trainer ben mayer ben's already put his uh, clear together so uh, natalie's turn now with the marigold sport horses of california's con calma for this whole stunning gelding by cascadello and uh, for for her again, we've seen her in lots of good horses in the last few months as well here as well with uh, a coater etc. But just giving Con Calma a little bit more exposure has saved this one for for the middle part of this chunk. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is maybe one of the bigger classes she's jumped on this horse. Yeah. But Natalie's so competitive, and strong up there. Beautiful ride there. You could see she really put the leg on, made sure the horse knew where he needed to go. Just looking really solid here. Going to set up this line. We'll see if she does the five. It looks like she's doing the five. And there, the horse was really steadying, uh, studying it and uh, spooking a little bit. She really had to put her leg on. I think that's probably not exactly how she wanted that to work out. It's why it comes down. She, uh, The horse really kind of studied, looked at it, and went, ooh, ooh, left, right, left, right a little bit. And uh, she really had to put her leg on there just to get down the line, which, of course, coming into those double verticals is not how you want it. And she did have the back pull of the net jets as well. But really sort of just getting into there, uh, as you say, exploration point together from that point of view. Stands off the, the bridge there. And final fence looking good. It been top 10 in the three-star Grand Prix this season. It's actually a former ride of Steve Gerda, of course, of uh, Switzerland. Yeah. But uh, Natalie just on the eight fault, 74-76. But, but I think uh, not, hasn't done about so many fours. No, so they've done about four rounds together this season from that point of view. They did a little bit last year, some of it up and down. There were two stars. They made a little bit of a move at, up, came back down again. Yeah. Uh, but you can still count the number of rounds together for them in around two hands worth. Yeah, exactly. So just figuring it out a little bit on these bigger tracks. Just down into this double. I think that's actually going to take us to our midway. It is. Uh, so it means four clears so far out of this uh, $200,000 JTWG uh, Grand Prix at this stage. We take a little bit of breather. Let me see Ben Mayer having a little chat uh, with Natalie to get the, the debrief there from them. Walk we'll past Leslie Howard, one of the other legends down there as yeah. well. Um, former World Cup winner. And uh, a few famous faces down there. Robert Ridlin just having a debrief as well with Laura Kraut on yep. Kung Fu. And uh, as you say, takes us up to the midway because rolling in are the trucks. And uh, we're going to make way for uh, that. And uh, we'll be back in a few moments' time with the second half of the completion of the 49 in total of this class. But 25 gone out of the group to date. Can Jumper make you a show jumping expert? With Jumper, explore the latest event results, discover top horses and riders, and follow your favorites. Jumper delivers data from around the world, so you're always the most informed. Download now and take a guesswork at show jumping with Jumper.
Smart Confection. Also, people behind Buckeye Nutrition and many awesome pet food brands. Our research has been responsible for the pet food
nearly set to go again into the uh, second half of this $200,000 four-star Grand Prix here through just into the afternoon now, just coming up to about seven minutes past 12. We kicked off this morning, though. Uh, through our first 25, four clears, just to remind you of the line-up there, and uh, Ben Mayer with point break gave us the first of clears from the world number two. Tom Watchman being in tremendous form for the... Uh, Young young rider, gold medalist Tom, uh, now building a nice partnership with uh, Berlick Z, has been for the last few months as well. And uh, then Sean Wordley showing Champion League to be uh, certainly joining the big leagues as they produce the third of the clears as well uh, for New Zealand this time. And uh, then to uh, Coco Faith, the uh, under-25 rider as well for the uh, US with the Hillside Farms of Ventador 5, giving us a clear round number four of the lineup. Mayor just walking along the in gate there. A few final preparations. You can see a little more hubbub going on down there now as a little uh, more frenesity uh, takes place down in the warm up area as they ready themselves for the uh, second half to uh, get underway. Who's coming up in the second half? Well, let's remind you a few of those just to take you through who's coming up. Uh, we've got Shane Sweetner, we've got Andre Thiemer of Germany, uh, Jacob Pope heads in here for the US, uh, Amanda Derbyshire of Great Britain, uh, Charlotte Jacobs of the USA, uh, Erin Ballard, Samuel Dehan of Great Britain, uh, Keen O'Connor of Ireland. Last three, in fact, all go for the US as well, and they're a strong three too, with Margie Goldstein, Engel, McLean Ward, and uh, Elise Oaken as that final three as well. Canada in the shake-up with Amy Miller and uh, Kyle Tim too. Chile will wave their flag with Samuel Parro Jr. Uh, there's a lot of nation jumping to do as part of this final day of Nations Cup week here in Wellington as well. So Ben Mayer, Tom Watchman, uh, Sean Wordley and uh, Coco Faith are the group at the moment. The group up in the commentary box is myself, Steve Wild, and alongside is Danny Waldman. Danny, um, interesting uh, first round from that point of view. A lot of errors coming in a lot of places. Yeah, I think we're seeing fault everywhere. And uh, B of the triple certainly causing trouble. Those uh, double verticals up on the top end of the ring, those are definitely troublesome spot. We've seen the, ver the offset Liverpool come down. Back pull of the green double. You know, it has been faults kind of all over the place. The wall causing a bit of trouble for a couple of people. Either horses spooking at it, not wanting to jump it, or having it down. I mean, it's certainly been faults all over the place. But uh, in general, I actually think it's jumping a little bit better than it walked. I thought it walked real solid. And uh, we're seeing good good rounds and uh, a lot of four falters. So, uh, and I think it's looking like it's going to shape up to be a nice jump off. Yep, certainly is so far and uh, could well be doubling up on that number, 8 to 10, somewhere in that region for that jump off. We will see. But we know what the first half will look like with Ben Mayer, Tom, uh, Sean, and uh, Coco there. The Kubota's tractors just doing the uh, final little sweep around the arena as well. And they're supplied through what uh, Florida Coast Equipment, our presenting sponsor of uh, last night's uh, Nations Cup as well. Just doing their uh, final run. And uh, certainly some interesting jumping so far as part of this. And uh, it's been great this week to welcome in uh, a few new faces uh, here and a few that'll be here for the next few weeks as well. We're into, uh, if you like, part two of the season. This is the... <laughs> The final, the, the second, final uh, stretch. The I final would stretch, say. however you want to do. We've, we've, the first half of the book is complete. Uh, we've still got chapters to go, from uh, nine through to twelve. And uh, down there, Mimi Gotchman is just readying down at the in gate with Inclen BH for the DG Sport Horses for the uh, US Young Rider as well. And uh, for her, nearly ready to go for the uh, nineteen-year-old. And I've seen actually some more Europeans even make their way over. Yeah. Um, I saw Harry Charles walking so around. Harry's here. Yeah. So I know there's going to be a few more people the next few weeks. Again, I think Nations Cup week sort of kicks that off. People come in for the Nations Cup and then stay for the remainder of the season. And it's going to be, you know, this week was CSIO four star, then next week five star, then another couple four stars, and then another five. I mean, it is just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. With big jumping through the end of the season. And and here in Wellington and outside of that with, with Ocala, and then it's going to be followed yeah. by Miami, etc. Yeah, there, there's a lot of big jumping to be done in the next couple of months here in the south of Florida. Yeah, it's about... Ooh, but not a bad place to be for no, this time of year. Exactly. It's something like six weeks of, of five five stars in there or something like yeah, that. It's, yeah, it's four, five uh, stars. there's yeah. a lot to be jumped. Too much almost actually for everyone unless you have multiple five-star Grand Prix You've horses. got to manage it. You do. You absolutely do need to manage it and uh, you know, try to peek at the events that you want to aim yourself for 
But uh, no lack of top sport nope. this time of year, which is great. Yeah, so uh, Kubota's are just heading on out and... Uh, Oh, no, we're taking yet another turn. And so just as they uh, finally make the last adjustments around the arena, we can see Amimi Gotchman down there just having final instructions from uh, Dara Kenny, as she was just a moment ago, to go in. She's been having a super year. So we'll see what Mimi can do again in the four-star a couple weeks ago. She was second, and uh, she's been riding great. A little kiss there on the neck. I know that move. I used to do that myself. <laughs> I think somehow I used to think that it was superstition, that if I didn't do it, it was going to be bad. I remember when I was a little pony kid, I used to do one kiss for every jump on the course. But then it just became habit. One kiss for every fence on the course. Yeah, I used to do that when I was a pony kid. I don't know. I'd give like, when it was like hunter ponies and it would be like eight jumps on the course. I would give four kisses on the right side of the neck, four kisses on the left side of the neck. And granted, I was a young girl at that time. Did not do that in my later years. But look at this. Mimi Gotchman coming on in and going to get our second half underway. Four clear at the moment. Mimi also, of course, just 19 years of age, sitting on Inklin BH, the DG Sport Horse LLC entry. Yep, let's go with Mimi. And uh, we've already seen her through to the five stars. She was on to teams last year for the US as well. She was uh, second in the uh, Grand Prix going back here to early February as well with uh, Selena BH. BH for Baxter Hill, of course, their home base. Yep. And uh, so... Mimi to get us back underway. Tractors are, last one is just making its way out. They let Mimi into the ring a little bit early so she could have a nice little tour around. And it'll be interesting actually. She's been standing still for a little bit and now she's in the ring walking around. Kind of a long time since her last warm up jump. Seems pretty chilled about it though. She does seem very chill. She'll have to make sure she gets that horse out in front of her and paying attention. So let's give it a little reminder. Danny, let, let's talk a few numbers here because those that are just joining us as well of how this has played out in terms of um, what the strategy is here around this course. Yeah, again, we'll go through a little bit as Mimi jumps it. But looking like they've mostly done about one to two in ten strides. Let's see what she does. Time-wise, it's been generally okay from, from that point of view as well. They've handled that well. Time uh, allowed at 76 seconds, just to give you a little reminder of that too. Absolutely. And she did do that 10, and then you're going to do the wall here. We've seen 8 and 9. Does a nice 8 in there, but has B down. That is one of been, been one of the most common faults we've seen on the course today. And uh, jumped well, actually, the first few horses that went, and then we started to see it come down a bit. But this horse, really beautiful jumper. Steady's up for the six here. We've seen a lot of fives, more fives than sixes, although I do think that the six is working out better. And then just sort of a normal four here to a careful, delicate Liverpool Oxer. And then it's right-hand turn away from the gate. This vertical oxer, and then six strides. They've jumped this Hermes jump beautifully. No one has had it down yet. She gets a good shot there. Lance just stumbles a little bit on the landing side, but clears the last. Unfortunate early fault for Mimi, but super round. Yeah, it just leaves her on the four from uh, an early rail for uh, Mimi Gotchman and uh, in Clan BH for the uh, US Young Rider. Little pat there. Happily enough, as you say, there's quite a few coming out there on just the four faults this time. Again, just scattered around. Let's look at this again. Jumped in with a lot of pace and a lot of speed. I don't think it's necessarily the wrong choice to do that eight, but it does pitch the horse a little bit on the front hand. On the front hand and... Uh, She's just not able to get but, but back again, and up around B. But again, you're looking at C, and your mind's on that 150, 165. Yeah, you got to get out I've there. Got to, I've got to have some power. Exactly, but you got to clear B first. Yeah. <laughs> Winning goods. Jorge Mads uh, Captivia now. And uh, now for the uh, Chilean rider part of the Pan Am Games last year with this very successful horse too. 
by winning mood. Not hard to trace that one back too far. No, nope, exactly. That's uh, the name gives it away. Nicely over the Rio wall. And looking good so far. Again, this horse was tremendously successful with Ben Mayer and Emily Moffat in the past. And then Jorge got it and rode to a really strong performance in the Pan Am games. I think it was his first Pan Ams, right? Yes. But this horse, tremendously careful. I've actually had the pleasure of riding this horse. And uh, just such a talented animal. It was so special when it was in the UK as a young horse. Yeah, with the Poland Farms, I remember Ben May riding this horse. I think it was a, as an eight-year-old in Madrid. Yeah, exactly. The two-star Grand Prix there. Coming home nicely for Looking Jorge. Looking great here. Get it done. Oh, oh, and he has the last one. He jumped up around the front pole really well, but just lost a little bit of power and kind of shifted on the land, on the backside of it, and came down on that back pole. What a shame, because that was a beautiful round. So very close, last fence dropping there, and again it's it's been a it's been a, a variation. It's a long way across this there final fence there. You can see there. stretches there, but just not able to get across the back. What a shame! Actually, jumped a beautiful, beautiful round. Carlos Sancarero now, and uh, for the rider for Mexico, the H5 Sport is H5 uh, Ganesh Hero Z for the recent Grand Prix winner. Up into uh, Ocala. Won the 150 Classic as well with uh, Chaco San here too. Won the Grand Prix with Portos Maestro. Another horse to go to now with Ganesh Hero Z by uh, Gemini uh, for him. Again, uh, younger rider side, 23 years of age, but has already been on teams uh, for Mexico as well. And he's been on such a roll recently. I think confidence levels are very high for Carlos at the moment. Been oh. 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 Well, it adds the first fence, the list of first. fences down, unfortunately. Yeah, it does. But now yes. we're seeing them come down all over the place. We had not seen the first one come down yet. And it is a rampy oxer. It's not typical, actually, that you'll see the front pole of a very rampy oxer. I mean, when I say rampy, it means that the front pole is a hole or two lower than the back pole. So it gives the horse that little feeling of it's climbing up over the jump. And it uh, normally makes it easier to jump the front pole. But unfortunately... Coming down for yeah. Ganeshiro. But this is a really scopey horse. I believe this might be one of their first big four-star Grand Prix together. Yes. They've done, uh, they've been doing some of the 150 classics from that. Yeah, point we've seen a lot of 140 classes. Yeah. But I don't know if I've actually seen them jump a one uh, meter 40 Grand uh, a four star Grand Prix yeah. yet. So there again, similarly, just jumps a little bit at that top pole. Just not up and around the Liverpool. Again, when you have an offset Liverpool like that, it is set into the corner. The four strides is working out well. It's a little bit steady, but they can just kind of look down at the pool and uh, not get their eye level up to the top pole. And they kind of just push the top pole out of the way. Yep, finishing on the eight this time, 74-38 last year here in Wellington. Just starting to move in some of the five stars, but again, the, the number two classes, if you like, in the five-star week. So again, you're looking at 150-ish from that point of view, say yep. moving them to the 155 plus here. Again. Yeah, see, so just has it on the way up. Silly fence to have. And then here, yeah, just not getting up high enough. You can see both front legs just touching that top pole. Jumps the Hermes beautifully, though. Take us on to uh, Kathy Dris Driscoll now, in fact, uh, out there. Uh, Shane Sweetham, I think, is a scratch. We'll get that confirmed. Yeah, I, thought so. I see Shane out there. Shane out there as well? Yes, he is out there. Yeah, Shane Sweetham is out there as well. Kathy's going to be along in a minute. So we've got two out there on the course at the moment. Two grey horses. Yeah, there he is. There he is. There he is. Uh, Shane Sweetnam and uh, Vaquest uh, Otis Blue is the uh, 10 year old gelding by uh, Jaguar Van Pamel for the uh, world number 12. Uh, and again, for him, it's been uh, a week of bringing those horses up as well. Arcon Bella, part of that team last night yep. uh, that won the Nations Cup as well, that he jumped so well last year too as a nine year old, just giving that horse a bit more exposure this season too into the bigger classes. And uh, it is then uh, Otis Blue. Again, getting a step up here with the Irishman. 
Wow, huge jump there at the wall. That was amazing. This horse jumping in beautiful shape. And Shane has a really strong string of horses at the yeah. moment to back up his top mount, James Con Cruz. But wow. Jumps up real high there, has a little bit of a rub, puts a bend in the six. That actually helped him out a lot. I'm lucky that it stayed up, but because he landed shallow, it helped make the six a little bit easier to accomplish. And then having the front pole of the net jets, the gray oxer, that jump come down a few times today. Not, uh, not so often, but we've seen front and back poles. And then staying on the bend here. Gets over number 12, keeps the energy up to the last. Beautiful jump there at the last. But yeah, just, just that one down. Just the one down. A little shake of the head from uh, Shane Sweet and Otis Blue there, 73-61. A uh, horse that came from Kasper Hansen of uh, Denmark. Been with him since the uh, latter part of last year, but just gets a move up there. Uh, jump around for just four faults in the four-star Grand Prix as well at the end of January. And uh, as I say, it's a good Yeah, there, just step you can see, has it them. on the way up. But look how beautifully he jumps this wall. Just wow, huge over that. There we go, Kathy and Driscoll. She's been wandering around for a little while now. Uh, Plain Bay Farms, uh, Casaletto, for the rider, was the leading rider in Traverse City last season. She's also been putting the wins together here in Wellington. She just keeps uh, on that progressing up the ladder, which is great to see. Yeah, she's... Uh, had a really strong season, won that five-star class last week. Yeah. Yeah, onto the, onto the Friday there with Flotilla. Flew around there. Casaletto is now getting a, a little bit more of a run as well into these big Grand Prix classes, which is great for her to see. Of course, she's been jumping a Rome in a lot of those and, yeah. and won like some Maya Grand Prix in Traverse City on that horse last year. Exactly. This horse, tremendously scopy. You can see just a huge jump, so much air time. Strong ride there. Lands a little bit loose in the saddles, out on the outside track. Gets to the base of this, but actually that kind of helped her out. It slowed it down a little bit so that she was not too quick coming into the triple. Good use of her body there at the skinny to really slow the shape of that jump down. And a big ride here. Shifts a little bit hard to the right. She does the five, but this horse naturally kind of slowing itself down on the takeoff point. So just trusting the carefulness there. And there, just a little bit far off it and reaches to the back pole. And unfortunately, those two coming down. It's funny, it's just a simple four-stride line on this side of the ring, but we're seeing those jumps really come down a lot, both the Liverpool and the Net Jets. And uh, it's a bit of a long run from that nine strides from that double verticals, but you'd think it was just a simple straight line along the side, but certainly causing a lot of trouble today. A jumping and two time total of 10 at 77-1-1 for the biggest uh, Grand Prix class they've jumped so far as a pairing. They jumped some of the three stars last year. Horse yeah. that came from uh, Mark McCauley of Ireland. But Let's actually quite a, a solid round. Yeah. Let's see this again. There you can see just took off a little far away, really reached across that and she tried to steady up here but just couldn't quite get it done in order for the horse to get his legs out of the way. But great ride into the triple. This was beautiful. She really rode this great. And, uh, but again, just moving up to that level, pretty solid result. Andre Tima of uh, Germany now, and uh, for the ride that won the European Championship uh, with DSP Shikaria going back to 2021 as well. It was uh, Team Silver there, but now uh, with uh, Cordani PS. Finished well in the Grand Prix in Ocala in the uh, last few weeks as well, been competing there over the last uh, little run. But uh, for this former ride of Denmark's uh, Tina Lund, uh, Andre, regular appear in, ooh, a little bit steady there, into yeah. the wall. Here in America, won a number of the uh, million-dollar classes, too. Oh, he's ooh, he's going to have to work that. Fast. Wow, Got it. that was some athleticism from the horse. He flew into the triple. Again, the horse hesitated a little bit at the wall. He did a great job to make sure that the horse jumped it, but... Uh, then he really had to move up to the triple, and he came in flying and a little bit angled, and he had to kind of bend at the one stride. Oh, does the steady there. Actually worked out well. So he's jumping good at the moment. I can't imagine that this is going to be his favorite round to remember because it's been a little bit erratic. But, hey, 
Name of the game is leaving the jumps up, and that is what's happening at the moment. Gets over A, reaches across B. Oh, and there, just a little bit on that inside track, a little bit the right corner of the Hermes. That's the first time we've actually seen that jump come down. Strong ride there again. Actually, a shame. We, the Hermes has not caused much trouble, but no. it, we're seeing now almost every jump on the course I think that's pretty well it down. now. Yeah. yeah, amazing. So uh, finishing on the four there, Frondre Tima and uh, Kordani PS for them. Just to say, a few moments where they were engineering it around there too. We'll have a little look at back at uh, that as well for the... Uh, I thought that was a hell of a ride actually yeah. from Andre. He really... There, you can see just a little bit on the right corner and just a little bit too deep. That's six. You need to stay a little bit on the bend so you can keep moving to it. And he was just maybe too much on the inside track. But uh, that was a solid ride from Andre. Uh, Zoe Conter of Belgium, Stefex Stables, uh, La Una with the mare by uh, Chaco Blue for the now regular visitor here to uh, Wellington through the winter months. For the 25-year-old on her regular Grand Prix horse. Takes us up to uh, 32. Gone out to the 49 in total of this class and as still well. still just the four clear. Not, not four. seen a single clear in the second half so far. But Zoe's been really solid on this horse. She's had some really good results this season. Uh, no problem there whatsoever. Sets this up well. Can she get over B? Yes. That was beautifully done. She really rode that perfectly. Nice space there. Lands kind of gallops away, thinking about the time allowed. Time allowed has not been such a big factor today. We've seen a couple of time faults here and there. She really steadies up nice for the six, gets right to the base, clears A and B. Again, the majority of sixes we're seeing is are working out. And it's when they do the five that we're not seeing it work out so well. And great job there, Zoe. You yes. can see she really pulled her shoulders back and let the horse jump up to her. Turns in a little early to this double. She'll need to steady up here. She's on the inside track. Gets over that. She's looking really solid so far. One more to go. I think she's fine on the time. And Looks good. Beautiful. Great result there for Zoe Conte. Yeah, Zoe Conte and La Una booking their place into the jump off now. So that's uh, five so far. And uh, the rider making her way in. So they've been competing in the I was saying no one U25s. jumped clear in the second round. There you go. There go. Predictions come up. And uh, look back here through the double. She turned a little bit earlier. Most people are getting a little bit straighter there to that, but uh, actually worked out nicely for her. But she gave a super ride and a beautiful jump there. On nice the shot at the last, yeah. Really good. And set there. <laughs> Fist pumping up. Happy enough. And set Jacob Pope now. And set Jacob with uh, Highway FBH for the uh, Highway Group. Uh, the Ivor Rakowski stable. This has been a, a super combination together over the last couple of years. And, and really, it was the last couple of years that uh, Jacob moved back into the, the top flight show jumping side. He also competes over in the Hunters very successfully as well, but had been doing a lot of national jumping and then went back into FEI and then made the next step up in FEI up to his first five stars and very swiftly yep. in the last uh, two years straight back in there and this is partly because of this very good horse. Yeah, this has been a super horse for him, been on Nations Cup teams with him and and if you see any similarity to Ben Mayer's horse, Ginger Blue, who he yeah. jumped in the Nations Cup last night, it's because they're both by Plot Blue and they look almost identical. <laughs> And uh, he was a little bit deep coming in at 4A, but it actually helped set up the triple. This horse having a lot of blood. Beautiful jumper. Jacob is such a good rider. Tried to steady mm. it up. Just looked like he still had a lot of momentum when he took off at A. It was the right move to do the six, but unfortunately was just still kind of getting it done as he got there. And the horse never had a, time, a moment to sort of sit back and jump around it. Just kind of had that momentum rolling into it a little bit, unfortunately. Jumping this beautifully. Jumps the little gate. And beautiful jump at the last. What a shame. 
Yeah. Otherwise, very solid round. Yeah, overall nice round. They're finishing on just the four goes into 15th place for Jacob Pope and uh, Highway FBH round inside the time at 75.07. Just touches a rail, joins a long list of those with just uh, one on the floor. Uh, look back here and again just runs forward yeah. into it. Just kind of jumped too low as he was rolling into it at a lot of pace. And he tried to slow it down with the six, so he did the right idea with that. But unfortunately, the horse was just still kind of rolling in the gallop with a little bit of the balance down and never kind of set itself and jumped away from it, kind of just jumped into it. Amanda Derbyshire now and the uh, British rider with uh, Cornwall BH. Holsteiner gelding for uh, Amanda. Been a British team rider before now as well, including European Championships in 2019, where she was riding to a team bronze. Again, based out here in Florida. And Amanda just having tremendous results on lots of different horses. Such a fast rider. Little look Oof. there. Yeah, I've actually seen Cornwall look at a wall or here or there. And, uh, I mean, it's been such a great horse for her, but she did a good job just to get him over that. He kind of... Peeked at it a little bit. I don't think he was thinking not to jump it, but just studying it just a bit Just a little closer. look of what is it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's new. I haven't seen that before. Nice shot through the Japanese fan double. Emulation of offense at the Olympics in uh, Tokyo. Yeah. A little bit close there, just kind of slithered over that Liverpool. Maybe a light, light touch, but stayed up. She's still looking good. Two more to go. Time? Time is... I think she's okay. No. Ooh. But unfortunately, did not like that yellow we sort of just didn't get a lock on really yeah just looked like he kind of made the turn and it does come up quick after that Hermes but just looked like he didn't see it because then he comes back around and just jumps it easy what a shame she was on the clear yeah oh too bad didn't actually touch a rail just unfortunately she has the four for the uh, circle there and 16 for time so it makes it look a bigger score than it actually was yeah as a exactly round. But it's not the prettiest uh, numerical number but uh, if you watch it you know that it was he didn't touch a single pole on the course just didn't like that turn and then came back around and jumped it easy tim gredley back to head up but yes just just there at the Bridge that was just outside Kyoto down in Santiago, just outside the few minutes from the park where the Pan Am Games were at the military base there. Tim Gredley, championship rider last year, but back over in Europe in uh, Milan at the uh, European Championships there with Madoc, now with the Imperial HBF for the uh, British team rider for this uh, gelding by Glasgow. Is his ride actually into the Nations Cup last what, night as well? It was, and he would, uh, had beautiful rounds, yeah. actually. I thought this was a wonderful performance from Tim last night. Yeah, I think it was just four faults in both rounds. Wasn't it? I think he had a time fault or so yeah, in the first exactly. round. Yeah, exactly. I think it was just really, really solid seconds. performance. And, uh, again, it's he has Madoc, which has been a super horse, and now it's nice to see another one performing solidly at this higher level. Great there through the triple. Unfortunately, having the skinny down, we haven't seen that come down in a while, but just maybe getting a little close to it. Yeah, just playing right out of space at that point. Yeah. Keep moving here. Touches A, unfortunately B comes down. Just rolling. He came in on the five. It was a little bit fast. Gets over that Liverpool. Like we said, we've seen faults all over the place today. And jumps that well. Coming home on the eight yeah. faults there for Tim. Yeah. So good solid finish. He does yeah. pick up that one time fault as well. Tiny bit slow. So uh, eight jumping one time, but it had a couple down by that point. Just There you can see, touches it behind, and then the front end just not able to get out of the way and having the 
be with the front. And so. again, as you say, you just see the pace. They're just traveling just that tiny fraction much through. Yeah, them. exactly. A little bit similar there at the skinny. He uh, just had rolling a lot of pace coming to it. And just couldn't back up again. These delicate verticals with the materials used to today and, and in all of this sort of modern sport these days, horses really need to set themselves and jump away from the verticals. It's easy to just kind of roll that canner right into them. Jadana now of Lebanon and uh, Peter Howard and Laurie Sadro's uh, Caro W. Winners in the 150s. Grand Prix winner here in uh, Wellington. A number of the national Grand Prix as well for uh, the rider representing Lebanon, based here in the U.S. as well. Right under the eye of uh, Leslie Howard. Well, he's been very successfully this year. He has, Judd. Such a good rider. And he's had a couple of, like, unlucky, unfortunate things happen the last couple of rounds, but we all know he is fully capable of winning any class out there. Such a lightning-fast rider. A little bit deep there, but no problem whatsoever. There you can see he just moved up at the end to make sure he got up to the base of it. And there used his body as a rider to really help slow that down. The horse had a lot of pace coming to that skinny, and he did a great job to use his, his own body weight to slow it down. Doing the steady six, gets the balance, helps a little bit at B. Oh, and just look like... Horse maybe dropped behind him a tiny bit in the nine strides, and then he needed to kind of re-move him forward and then just lost a little bit of the shape of the jump. And no trouble there at the Hermes. But we've seen that NetJet Soxer come down plenty today, both front and back pole. Strong ride to the last. That stays up. He will pick up one on the time, so just three tenths of a second over that time allowed. But it'll be a total of five. Yeah, well, five in all there for Jadan and Caro W for Lebanon. Remaining with five as the number. Five clears the stage, so we come to the one out of this second half of the class so far. Of course, we're not completed the second half yet. We're about of a, a quarter of a way through that second run. Maybe a little bit more. Coming up to halfway, actually, probably closer to it. 37th uh, just completed of 49. So 12 left to take a run. A little bit of encouragement through the last as they uh, go there for uh, Caro W. Charlotte Jacobs and uh, with the ride of Rincula Milchon for uh, the North Star team. Went very nicely earlier on this week too for a uh, top three finish there. Uh, really nice looking combination. Charlotte, who again, has been putting consistent scores in this season as she did last year as well. She's been on to uh, teams uh, previously for the US now as well. And the nice string of horses behind her for this uh, Irish bread ride, which brings in the, the breeding of cruising through there on the dam side. And this horse, everybody's favorite, just looks like a blast to ride. And uh, just like a little pogo stick. It <laughs> bounces over the jumps like a little roly ball. Let's see how it handles this. She jumped the qualifier beautifully. Like you said, third place finish there. Let's see what little Rincula Milchon can do today. She sets up this wall here. Beautiful jump. Very springy. Oh, and just has... Ooh. And uh, just looked like he swam through B a little bit, or through C a little bit. He had B. Charlotte is up, so... We know she is okay. Just yeah. had B down, and off. then the way that she had B, she just ended up far away from C, and the horse just swam through C a little bit, and uh, Charlotte lost her balance. And came off, but she is up, walking her way back, and the horse is captured. So Yeah, she's just walking out to say yeah. just to get the last bit of surface off her. Absolutely fine and dandy as she takes a stride out to the, the arena. That's been that just coming, yes, just coming to check on her. Yeah. All okay. We'll get back on. Yeah. The horse was making a really there good effort. Go. And, uh, yeah, you can see there she is a-okay. But certainly not the way she would have liked that to go. 
jumped A really well and uh, just struggled a little bit at B. And then the way that she had B just ended up far away from C that a uh, horse just felt like he needed. He kind of tried to get over it and uh, kind of threw his legs down. And that can really throw the balance off of the rider. Yeah. What a shame. OK. Uh, well, there's Mum Joan down there as well, just coming to check on her. And so we'll go on to Erin uh, Ballard and the uh, White Show Stables Coconuts as uh, our next for the Canadian World Championship rider. Well, their team as well. It finished uh, up there on the podium last night. Yeah, Aaron put in an unbelievable performance for Team Canada last night. Four, well, one down, I think, in the first round, clear in the second round. She was just a tremendous performance on libido. So she has a couple of really top horses to jump at this high level. Sure, she's aiming herself for the Olympic team. And like Niall was saying last night, Aaron has incredible position on the horse, just beautiful body control, never getting in the way, but always letting the horse jump. Have an A and B down there. Again, we're seeing the triple. You know, in the early part of the class, I thought the triple actually looked like it was riding much better than I thought it would. And now as the class is getting deeper into the list, it's actually riding worse and worse. And I don't know if it's it's hot out there. It's some heavy jumping to be doing. Again, it is a $200,000 class, so plenty of prize, prize money. But it is some heavy jumping out there today with the very hot and humid weather. You can see a lot of sweat on the horses, that it is toasty out there. But Aaron riding here really, really well. Again, she's just so solid up there. Rarely making any kind of errors. And gets over the last, but with B and C of the triple coming down, that's going to be eight for her. It is, and uh, for a combination of jump round, just two time falls in the four-star Grand Prix back at the end of January. So, again, just getting a move up in the classes with Erin uh, there with uh, Coco Net. Little look here at the Logano triple combination. Yeah, just has B down behind, and then again loses some power. She takes off at C and having the back pull of C. But other than that, jumped a really good round. Jimmy Toronto now, and uh, Jimmy with Chewbacca HCC for the Isolu Incorporated and uh, Jet Show Stables. For the experienced uh, US rider with his horse by Clarimo. Amazingly, this horse is by Clarimo and uh, Quintero Mother, and uh, Rolf Jorn Bankston, the Swedish rider, rode both. Both of those. Both yeah. of those. Yeah. Caramos had some big jumpers. Yeah. And of course, Mario Delorier's horse uh, was also a Clarimo that we saw earlier. Yeah. Bartolina. And uh, this, the Quintero mother actually was the same mother as Cassini one, which is a famous breeding stallion. Yeah. Jimmy deliberate in his execution so far. You can see the horse has a little bit of a different technique than some of the other horses we've seen. Um, his legs, his front legs are a little bit wider. And there he jumps up real high. And Jimmy, because he landed shallow without so much pace, didn't want to gallop in there in five. Opting to do the six, which actually worked out. Steady's up here. Horse shaking his head a little bit, just maybe disagreeing with Jimmy trying to control him and slow him down, but so far it's working. Whoa. Go on. Oh, Gets across it. That was a scopey jump there. The problem is going to be time. Yeah. And he's going to have to keep moving here. I don't think he's going it's to get over oh, it. Oh, and it won't fence. matter. Has that last jump down. Again, just looked like they were having a lot of discussions out there about control and unfortunately front pole with the one time. So they got plenty of jump and said just there finishing with the four and the one time as the last uh, line coming down there with the four and just was going to be tipping over there. A couple of there, as you say, places where they were just having a little bit of discussion between them. Uh, big over the wall early on, but it's certainly got ability. But again, you lose like a second yeah, there. Yeah, just a little bit. The connection point just looked like it was not exactly where the horse was 
Jimmy was trying to make some adjustments, and the horse was just saying, I don't know what you want. It's not what I want to do. And that's why they jump more to be partnerships together. Exactly. Samuel Dehan of Great Britain, Joe Anston Allen's WKD Toronto, the horse he rode onto the teams for Britain last year in uh, Spruce Meadows, a horse by Tornesh for uh, Sammy. Sammy Pass, winner of the Grand Prix in Spruce Meadows, in fact, go back to 2018. It's Paris Grand Prix 2017 with Sumas. Uh, Sumas Oscar Zorro. From Zorro, from that point of view. Sumas Oscar was another horse that goes back even further. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sumas I love that Zorro. Horse. Zorro. Zorro is a great animal. It was such a small little horse, but boy, did it have tremendous results. And Sammy did a great job on that animal. Love to see him out. He's just here. Uh, first time out this week for the Nations Cup. Yeah, I saw him in Spain competing yeah. two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Pops over the wall. Beautiful ride there. And that's why that works out. Yeah. Rode in beautifully. And there, a shoe goes flying. Which, of course, is annoying. But with the footing, good footing out here. Absolutely no trouble. We even see horses jumping barefoot these days. So yeah. I think losing a shoe, as long as it comes off cleanly, no problem whatsoever. We'll be able to tack that back on. Unfortunately, having the back pole of the net jets, that gray, simple gray poles, the nine strides off the double verticals just kind of asks the horses and riders to kind of open up that stride, and then they're just not jumping that oxer very well. Gets over five, uh, gets over in the five to the last, but has the two down. Yeah, leaves him on eight there for Sammy Adahan and WKD Toronto. So still holding at the five clears at this stage. And uh, just what, one, two, three, four, five, about seven left to go in the first round uh, from that point of view here. A little look back yeah. at the MS Oxer OK. Uh, on to uh, Amy Miller, again jumping well last night for the Canadians. The Future Adventures, Cristiano this time around, though, the uh, Chamber Gelding by uh, Canoso for the Pan Am medalist too, and uh, Canadian Olympian. This horse, uh, I believe, won one of our 150 classes a yes. few weeks back. Back to, the, back to the early part of the season. Yeah, actually. It, it all starts to sort of, <laughs> feels like I five know. minutes. And it was yeah, <laughs> is it five minutes or five years? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's one or the other. Either way, has every chance here in uh, this afternoon's. Absolutely, and Amy was great helping Canada to that second place finish last night. Perfect ride there at the wall. Unfortunately, B coming down yet again just a hard jump to jump. The horses, like I said, just optical illusion. They don't see it well. Distance coming into the triple actually has been riding quite well. You have the option to do eight or nine. It's more just that B itself with the solid poly collared poles. It's just difficult for the horses to judge how much they need to jump up. And they kind of look through it and don't look at that top pole because they see the plank on the backside at C. Nice turn in there. Looks like the strap actually of her boot has come undone. The horse's boot, you can see. Yes, it. just flapping around underneath yeah. there. Yeah, but it's not going to no, phase them. No, it affect her at all, but picking up that one down. So finishing on four is 74 two, zero. Another one going very close there with Amy Miller and Cristiano, but uh, again, not just quite able to convert it into the zero. Let's see her through the double of verticals. Yeah. Again, just sitting here. Let's see, she jumps in. She's a little bit gappy maybe coming in and then just jumped B a little bit at it. Can't believe we're just still sitting on the five clear. Actually, I can't believe it. I thought it was a, tr a difficult class. <laughs> but, uh, we, we've still got a few to go yet. We've still we got some very strong combinations, one of which is our next one in the room. Absolutely. We could be sitting on um, seven or eight yet, but um, we'll see. For Moy, for uh, Susan Magna, and uh, for 
Uh, Kian O'Connor here. This is uh, the stallion by uh, Chaco's son for the Irishman on that uh, winning team last night. Uh, so successful they didn't have to go in the second round. Yeah. Um, from that, that point of view. Great performance by the Irish. Although they do seem to dominate our Nations Cup here in Wellington year after year. Yeah, well, they've got they've got plenty of depths to go to. They do, actually. I was speaking with the chef to keep, and he was saying that I can't remember how many, but it was somewhere upward of 80 or something yeah. like that of ri different riders that jumped on Nations Cup teams throughout last year, which is just shows you so much depth in the Irish riders capable of jumping a high level. Here, steadying up for the six. Well done. That's exactly what he told his student, Tom Watchman, to do. Tom executed it perfectly. Let's see if Kian can do that. And Kian was uh, telling me the other day also that he loves to keep, to maintain ownership in a lot of his horses. And uh, he shares and does syndicates on horses in order to develop them to the high level. But Looking he good. always loves to keep some ownership in them himself. Oh, oh, what a shame. Jumped such a good round. And again, the horse has a lot of blood and just maybe got there a little bit early in the final five. But that was such a beautifully executed round. And unfortunately, he will pick up one on the clock as well. Total of but five then. There. Yeah, for Ken O'Connor and for Moy, again, uh, one of their bigger classes to come through this season, 76-1-6. Just a shame there with the last fence down. So uh, leaves us with five left to go, one for Canada, one for Chile, three for the United States here. The final fence just clips There away. you can see it just got there a little bit early. What a shame. Kyle Tim now for uh, Canada, the Rain family's uh, Kandar male for the uh, French bred gelding by uh, Lando. Obviously he jumped onto Nations Cup in Spain uh, last year as well. In fact, he was in Spain till not too long ago, into the early part of uh, this year as well for uh, Kyle. Spent time in Spruce Meadows uh, last season. Actually, a uh, horse that also within the Rain family has been ridden by uh, Rain family ownership, ridden by Beth Underhill as well. She rode this horse in the World Cups in Morocco. Kyle doing such a great job for the Rain family's horses. Nice start. He stepped one of the other horses up, a uh, big gray horse that they have. He stepped it up and jumped one of the big classes a couple of uh, night classes ago, and that was just a tremendous yeah. performance. Casino Calvin. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, a little bit of a touch there at A. Slows down here. Beautifully done, though, in the five. He executed that really well. He's looking good so far. A little bit of a shift there yeah, through the double. Yeah, move out, yeah. yeah. Actually helped him land a little bit to the left so he could keep coming in the six. Nice gap there at 12. He looks okay on the time. And, oh. Uh. Last is getting a few. Yeah. Actually, we hadn't seen the last come down until later down, later on in this course. And now we've seen it come down a couple in a row. Uh, finishes on four there. 74-37 for Kyle Tim and uh, Kanda Mayo. So close. That last fence. Big stretch out over that. Uh, it's, uh, over 170, that final one. But, but again, it is super wide. That jump was tremendously wide when I walked it here. You can see jumps across it. But... Just pops the back pole. When I was standing there, I had put my arms out to the yeah. side and tried to touch him between the poles, but it was too wide. I couldn't but, but, touch. but again, you need that pace up there, and that's the thing. They just back off that little pace a little bit. And just yeah, exactly. Make it's it. a little bit of a steady five. It comes off of the delicate plank, and... Uh, you just got to keep that energy and power up to get across that back pole. Uh, first is three left to go, all for the USA. Margie Goldstein Engel now and the uh, Glade Winds Farms Jack of Hearts for the many-time Grand Prix winner, including here in uh, Wellington, Florida. Spent several years now producing Jack of Hearts through this uh, Danish bread. Horse by uh, Jack of, by Heartbeat, rather. Gelding now 12 years of age. This has been really, this is going really well for Marjane. She had a great round out on the field a couple of weeks ago on this horse. 
They are a great job to keep the energy up. That was beautiful. There, anytime that anyone is getting there with high energy, sort of high revs, but right to the base, then the triple is working out well. It's when you get there a little bit fast and long that it's uh, not really working out. She's going to do the five here. She's going to need to steady up for this. Horse really pats the ground, jumps around those. That was well done. Steady's up for the four. He jumped up and away from that top pole really well. We've seen a lot of horses kind of jump into that. And Jack of Hearts really jumping away from it. She's really on the left corner here. She has to keep moving in the six because she was so far out on the outside track. Two left to jump. And now she'll need to keep the energy up for the last little bit tight. Oh, Ugh. and again. The back pole coming down. What a super round that was. What a shame. Just finished on the fourth, Margie Goldstenangle and uh, Jack of Hearts as well. So it is just going to be one down for them going to ninth place, 73.05. Again, you've got to put a confident stretch out going right towards the end of the arena. You're not too far away from that, you know. You're so it's yeah it's, it's hard you know the, the, that five is really steady i thought she got a really good shot at the plank at the bridge jump and she jumped it and then she was trying to keep the energy up but she just got there a little bit early yeah you see she was just a little bit too deep and the horse did a great job to get away from that front pole but uh, lost a little bit of the power in that attempt to slow up and get around the front just ended up not having enough power to get across that back and again it is super wide jump you got to remember that McLean Ward, world number eight with Contagious for the Beechwood Stables for the Rivers family. And the horse that he rose, of course, at the Olympic Games, going back to Tokyo for a team silver there. They've been major Grand Prix winners. Pan Am gold last year as well. Uh, five clears, uh, just the two left to go, including McLean. But if he pulls this off, whatever happens is going to be down towards the end because only Lissy Oaken to follow him. Exactly. Ooh. Rub it B. Luckily, it stays up. McLean knows this horse so well. Picks and chooses which classes he wants to do them in. Really set him up for this daytime Grand Prix. Didn't even jump him in the qualifier. Does the steady six. Oh, look how careful. But that's why this horse is as famous as he is. Beautiful jump there. Steady's up. And I think McLean does an incredible job managing his horses and having longevity out of them. Over the years, you've always seen him keep horses at the high level. Look no. at that. A shame. Just having the back pull down. Again, we've seen that rail come down. Just shifted maybe a little bit right. Wants to keep the energy. Gets across the last. That was a great ride to the last. Quick enough time, it will put him into ninth at the moment. So he knew, you could see, he was trying to be quick to that last line just because he knows there's only five clear. Yep, puts him on the four faults into ninth place. Here, let's take another look at where that rail came. So he jumps A and then jumps across B, but it is just wide. The horse just didn't quite get across the back of it. But look at this ride at the triple. Just touches B there. Luckily, that one stayed up, so he only has to finish on the four faults. Uh, Lee Soken last to go then with Bonhomme Richard for the uh, High Hopes Farm of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Stallion, French Bread Stallion by Katsoki. So she was out there the last few weeks onto the uh, teams for the US out in Abu Dhabi. She was on teams last year and previously in the likes of uh, Norway and Drammen, going very well there. And Bonhomme Richard. Has been getting the move up as uh, Elvira has been heading back across. Yeah, from exactly. Abu Dhabi. It was over in uh, all the way over in Abu Dhabi, yeah. heading back over here. So Richard has been stepping up. And again, this is such a small horse, but such a jumps that jumps so easily. Again, ooh, did not like no. the wall. And again, that wall has certainly caused a lot of trouble. And, you know, we've seen in a lot of these Grand Prix, the wall coming up early. It's, you know, in a lot of the classes, it's actually been second. And uh, now third jump, but away from the gate, new jump, no wings. It's just a difficult jump to jump. The horses just don't sight in, in, it, uh, in on it. They don't think that it's something they're supposed to jump. It looks like an obstacle they should go around. 
That's exactly, because then they come back and they're like, oh, you wanted me to jump this. Now yeah. I see it. Steady's up here. Good ride there through the double verticals. There she does a big, a good job. The horse takes a really big stride at number two, kind of leapt forward, and then she kind of just kept maintaining it and organized it. Gets across the green double. And now she's really building this back together well. Yeah, just exactly. Let's get you can the see last she done. just wanted to make sure that he yeah. saw what looks almost like another wall, that he was really focused on it. Yeah, That's but a shame. Too bad. Yeah, no. just finishes with four there. 14 for time, 89-11 for Lee Soken and uh, Bonhomme Richard is the final combination there. Here we go. Uh, there back you can to the see wall. It. And this was a little bit quiet, and I think just at the last minute, the horse was like, oh, I don't really know what, Not so sure. what we're supposed to jump. Yeah. yeah. Because then, look, he comes back around and just jumps it easy. Yeah, goes, okay, got it. No problem. Yeah, pop right over it like it was nothing. Well, there over the MS fence means uh, completing our first round is $200,000 JTWG uh, four-star Grand Prix. It is five of them qualifying for the jump off. Ben Mayer will lead them off uh, with point break for Great Britain. Tom Watchman after that with uh, Berlick Z for Ireland. Sean Wordley of New Zealand and uh, Champion League USA represented by uh, Coco Faith and Adventador 5. And uh, Zoe Conta of Belgium after that for our five into the jump off. We'll be back after a short break to uh, build up to the jump off for this Nations Cup Grand Prix.
Well, getting set for the jump off of this uh, Nations Cup Grand Prix JTWG $200,000 class there. The five clears, Ben Mayer starts things off, Tom Watchman second, Sean Wordley third, uh, Coco Faith and uh, then Zoe Conta to complete. Let's take a look at that jump off course as well of what we've got in store for our courses that have been completed this week, designed by Steve Stevens and by Nick Granite. And it's going to be a very interesting one indeed to take a look at. Yep, let's take a look. It's going to be starting at number two, which is the Florida Coast Equipment Oxer. Here we go. There you can see Florida Coast Equipment number two is going to be our start point. Right hand turn to number three. It was the wall. It is now a vertical Bainbridge jump. So new obstacle, same location. Then right handed turn down to BC of the Lugano triple it's now just a double vertical oxer then a left hand turn to the original number one at the jtwg oxer and then left handed across the middle i think there might be a nine there to number 15 it's a new obstacle the loves to vertical and then right handed turn to the original liverpool vertical at number nine Right-handed turn to 10A, and then long run down to 11 at the Hermes Oxer. And we'll see if they can do, it was six and one. We'll see if they could do seven strides up that last line, but going away from the gate off of a rollback turn like that, it's going to be hard. They may end up doing eight to the last. It's going to hard, be hard to get that momentum up, but... Uh, we will see. We will certainly see five coming up in this jump off. Strong start with Ben Mayer. The young Tom Watchman is going to be right on his heels, however. Sharn Wardley on the newer mount. And then Coco Faith and Zoe Conter rounding out those five. It was a challenging first round, but uh, we've seen five come through. And an exciting conclusion to this CSIO four-star week at Wellington. Absolutely, no doubting some pace is going to come from the uh, early couple in there. Tom Watchman in good form, having both uh, performed well here and uh, in Ocala the last few weeks. Ben Mayer on a tear here in uh, Wellington as well. Absolutely coming out fully loaded with a wonderful string of horses and point break is certainly one of those. Sean Wordley delighted with that uh, Champion League to uh, put things together for the New Zealand rider. And uh, Coco Faith and Zoe Conta can just go out and chase this because they're going to know what they're going to have to run for. Yeah, exactly. Zoe's sitting in the pole position. It's perfect shot. She'll know exactly what she needs to do in order to beat whoever the leader is at that point. And, uh, you know, not much to lose here in this class. It's one of those jump offs where everyone should really go for it because you never really know. And, you're top uh, five, whatever you're doing. Yeah, exactly. You know you're going to be top five, $200,000 class. So there's plenty of prize money, four-star ranking points with the CSIO bonuses. So it's going to be a good race, hopefully, for our deciding round. It certainly is. So uh, finishing touches just coming from our arena team down there as uh, they set the course. And there's the Kubotas. Just uh, making sure the maintenance of the arena is, say, JTWG that uh, maintain and produce our arenas here as well, involved with the consultation of doing that. And uh, so uh, they're going to test out the surface here this afternoon. It is now just after 1 o'clock local time. Not far away. Warm, sunny day. A little bit of... Um, rainy, humid weather on the way. Very it's just humid. looming at the yes, moment. It's, it's, just looming. It's lingering around. We're getting it, late, getting it later, I think. It's been getting later and later. It was threatened for about quarter past 12, and thankfully we're an hour later now, and we yeah. might just get it, things rolled out and done today. We'll see. It's still it's looking cloudy out there, yeah. but and a little bit of a breeze, but that humidity in the air, you can feel it's, it's coming. It's dark over the gallery. It is say. dark over the gallery. <laughs> anyway. Uh, palm trees are just uh, just swinging in the breeze, little flags are flying. One more flag to fly yet of who will be our winning nation. Uh, we've got a good range there, five different riders, five different nations to take a shot at this as well. Ireland have had such a good run with the Nations Cup win last night as well. Will it be them again or will be Ben Mayer back into the top or will Belgium shake things to uh, be differently? We've got five. Nice to, to see, see five different countries yeah. represented. No it's repeats. One, it's a nice Nations Week. It is. Nations <laughs> Cup Week, and we're seeing all the nationalities out there. It's exactly what you would want to see. 
think we said how many? 24 nations? No. Not tw were there 24 nations? 24 nations competing in this. In yeah. 24 nations competing in this class today. So not surprising that we're going to see five different ones in our jump off. But Absolutely. Normally, a lot of these classes here in Wellington, we've been seeing around between 13, 14 nations represented. So it's great to see Nations Cup week with lots of different countries having representatives competing at this very top level. Uh, we should probably say as well, uh, that jump, of course, um, starts the Kubota back to what was the wall is now a Bainbridge um, ve ve vertical there as well. Yes, exactly. We so we it? changed that out and uh, totally new obstacle, but certainly a friendlier one yeah. with a plain vertical. Although I will say when you have a horse that jumps the wall and obviously the five that are clear had jumped the wall easily. Yeah. You know, then it's almost a freebie jump because it's actually yes. hard to knock the wall the wall down because the horses are nicely backed off it. It's now just sort of a plain blue and white vertical. It may be the horses are a little bit surprised by it and it can be a little bit harder to jump clear. So we'll see if that plays a role. Curious what strides they do around the course. Ben presumably will be very neat with his track. But looks like tractors are just making their final preparations. They're putting the jumps back in the cups. Horses and riders out in the warm-up. You can kind of see through the, the gazebo in the back. Yeah, yeah. Nice riders' lounge here at Wellington International. Yeah, the MS riders' lounge just down there. As they, that's where all the discussion takes place. If you want to go and find out something... Exactly. Go, Go hang the out base. there and you'll get all the behind the scenes you could possibly <laughs> want to know. So looking a fairly relaxed afternoon from many at the moment. Just nice and full for those uh, into the lunchtime session here to enjoy the, the uh, closing part of this Grand Prix. Just to say about quarter past one local time as well. So just a few minutes away from kicking things off next week into our five-star week again week nine Bainbridge week absolutely I uh, I do believe week nine will have the open water in the five-star Grand Prix yes. it tends to have it I don't think it's required by anyone but uh, we do often see that and we did see of course the open water last night in our uh, Nations Cup competition it is taken out of the arena now but I have a feeling they're gonna stick it somewhere else and it's going to be an interesting week. week. A couple of shake-ups because Ben Mayer and Richie Vogel are off to the Dutch Masters as yes, well next week. Yes, exactly. So, uh, there's, there's a couple stepping out of uh, the action here. They'll be back, of course, for that strong run, as you say. And there's a few faces hanging around that might start appearing as well next week. So just keep an eye out. There's Ben Mayer making his way down uh, with point break, just watching as the tractors finally make their way to the uh, last few touches up here. Absolutely. Did see, we said earlier, Harry Charles yeah. wandering about on the showground. So I have a feeling he's swooping in to <laughs> try to pick up some of that prize money. I was joking with him earlier in the season. He goes, it's great. I'm going to come for the last four weeks. Everyone's already tired. Horses have seen the jumps. He goes, I'm going to come in fresh and try to clean up. <laughs> so we'll see if he can do that. He's not the only one. <laughs> he is not the only one. I have a feeling we're going to see some big names coming up in the coming weeks. So it's going to be very exciting here in Wellington. We always like to get a little shake-up at the end of season. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be very strong, especially into that Rolex Grand Prix, to uh, complete the season as well. And I think with a lot of riders coming over for the League of Nations up in Ocala, they may just stick around for the 500,000 the or two. following week. There are one or two as well. Yeah. There are, I think, a few. I'm aware of names. I'm just not naming names. Me too. Names. I am just also aware. I am aware of also a name of someone who's coming for the League of Nations and not going to stay for the five-star, but... We're not going to mention any of those. We're going to keep We've it a nice surprise this. for you We've guys. Got lots of those. The only way to find out is to keep following along. But Ben Mayer uh, will be with us for the final stages there as well. But uh, now for the world number two with uh, point break set to go. Absolutely. And if anyone is curious, the strap you see there from the tail to the saddle is actually just cradling the horse's manhood in order to make it more comfortable. Sometimes you see that and you think, what is that? But it, it is a stallion and uh, just giving him, giving him some underwear. Yeah. <laughs> ben taking a look at these turns. He is, of course, going to want to put the pressure on everybody. 
And I know he'd like to pick up another Grand Prix win here. Already a winner this season. He certainly would love to pick up another. And he's well on his way to being number one in the world. We're going to see if today's Grand Prix will affect that. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, because we're going to be into March now. So Coming up, I one. think he's... Holding it his breath for usually the March takes rankings. a few days to come through. It does. We'll yeah. see it around the 4th or 5th, I believe. Yeah. Ben Mayer then to kick things off with uh, points break. So it looks setter. like he's going to come off the left to number one, set up that left to right angle so he can go right around the little palm tree back to the Bain Bridge. Let's see what he does. Seven strides. Ten into the double. He keeps moving here. Good shot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think he did nine. Kept moving, certainly. This is good. He does nine again. Squares up a little bit, so he's already turning back. Needs to keep these jumps up. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Does the eight to the last, but certainly puts the pressure on. 41 4 0 is that time. Yeah, Ben Mayer starts us off with point break, putting the pressure on, and uh, will it be enough? Well, all we can do is wait and see. He's certainly given a good shot. He certainly has. I don't think he left too much on the table. Maybe there is a seven down that last if someone really wants to try, but I thought he was very efficient and quick everywhere. Seven, one to two was wonderfully done. I think that's going to be hard to replicate. And uh, you can see him land through those timers and make sure he gets, you know, after the last jump, make sure he gets through those timers as quickly as possible. But super round to get us started here, definitely putting on the pressure. But I have a feeling the young Tom Watchman is going to want to chase him down. See what the 19-year-old can do. Tom Watchman, like I say, also in good form, has been uh, certainly hitting his stride in the last few weeks with uh, wins here and uh, also up in Ocala. was dominating that week to jump in both venues in the same week too. Burlock says for the uh, home Coolmore show jumping uh, for the uh, Watchman family and, of course, Magnus. Now, can the Irish put themselves at the top of the table once again? Let's see what he does here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gets the seven easy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. Oh. He was just backing off coming down there. Yeah, funny. He was uh, maybe trying to slow up a little bit for the vertical into the double. But a uh, horse just didn't like what he saw. And then comes back, jumps it just fine. Maybe the angle, maybe a little bit the way that he set it up. Hard to say there exactly what happened. And then he does have the front pole there. Again, he knows he's guaranteed top five. No need to chase at this point. You know, It's one thing when you have a fault down. It's yeah. another when you have a circle. You know the time will be slow regardless of the penalties. So he jumped a... Beautiful first round, but just not working out in the jump off the way he would have liked today. So 59-14, 16 the score, 12 time, unfortunately, for Tom Watchman. And uh, Burlock said, started off in fine style, but unfortunately, just coming down to so that uh, Logano double, things were not quite going well. Let's see here. Yeah, the see first. The rollback has the front pull there. Yeah. Jumps the last, but has that front pull as well. Sean Wordley then, door is open for the New Zealand rider with uh, Della Wordley's uh, Champion League. Time to see if they can lift the trophy. It's 41 4 0 from them. No real gauge from Tom, so we'll see how this plays yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. We're hard to say now how Ben's time really is. Again, that 41 40 seems like a super quick time to me. Um, it wasn't flying around the course, but it was very neat and efficient. And again, this is a course of a jump off. It's all sort of related distances. There isn't anywhere to just sort of let loose. It's a lot. It's rollback after rollback after rollback, and then all related lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Ben did the seven, and it no. comes down. So then again, 
I'll have to say, because with the two more coming up after Sharn, with only one double clear, Four Faults is going to be in second place no matter what. So you do still want to be quick and keep the pressure on in case somebody else does have a fault afterwards. Clears this. Again, looking like Sharn just trying to keep it organized, leave those jumps up. But you need to be quick enough. Does the patient eight down the last. So we'll just pick up that one down. Goes in the second on the four faults, 46-2-2 for uh, Sean Worley and Champion League. So uh, Coco Faith and uh, Zoe Contest take on the world the, number two. The two women. Yeah. Let's see if they can give Ben a run for his money. Just tried to get there, just slice across it. Yeah, he, was, and he did the eight. Everyone else actually, Ben and uh, Tom had done seven there. So the eight just got a little bit dead and slow. All right, let's see what Coca Faith can do. Yeah, 23 year old with uh, Aventador 5, like you say. Might as well take a run at this because uh, it is. Not much to lose at this point. It's open there for you. And I will say, I don't think Sharn was particularly speedy. So no, if she could even have, even if she has one down, if she's a little bit quicker, she could end up on the podium. Yeah. And high up, she could end up even second in the class. So she's got to give it a, she's got to give it a go. Nothing to lose at this point. So she sets up a little bit of a more direct line, not so angled. Does the eight. Does 10 into here. A little bit of space here. Looking like she's trying to be as quick as she can. But knowing that a double clear will stick her into second, second place, a little bit of a touch there. So she's being a little bit conservative and cautious, wanting to leave these jumps up. Because, again, that's the name of the game. And that is the hard thing with a, with a jump off with not so many in it. And you already know that there's only one coming after you. You're guaranteed a spot on the podium, which there she will be into second yeah, into with second that double place. clear. 48-29 playing it sensibly there for Coco Faith and uh, Aventador 5. So Actually picked up a time fault. Yeah, but it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter at all. She'll take that time Same fault. Spot. And... Uh, well-played strategy on her part to just say, okay, don't think I'm going to beat Ben. Let me just be as quick as I can, but leave the jumps up because that's going to get you high enough up on the placing that she's currently sitting in second. So where she could be is third. And our last one is making their way in. Last one is, uh, of course, uh, Zoe Concha of Belgium. Steph X Tables, uh, La Una. This would be a nice win if she can pull this off. Uh, ben Mayer is uh, leading one time fault in second for Coco Faith. Sean Wordley in third on the four. And uh, then for uh, Zoe to get this done. All right, nice. Zoe's going to have to be very, very quick and efficient in order to beat Ben. Ben was quick, but I do think it is beatable. But it's yeah. just a matter of can you ride that track and leave the jumps up. And uh, I thought Ben took enough risks, but not uh, tremendous, but certainly enough to put that pressure on. Get a good shot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Ben did seven. So she needs to be quick here. And actually knowing this was pretty quick here. I think Ben maybe was a little bit quicker. She's got to leave those jumps up, though. Galloping across the middle. Steadies up. Ooh. Ben. Just snaked over that. Definitely touched it. Ben had landed. Big gap. Oh, no, it's, the this comes gonna down. Lunch. But she needs to keep moving in order to still get herself on the podium. <gasps> Another rub there. Got to be cautious here. Leave this last one up. Time's good. Time's Get all third. right. She will end up in the third place, but super effort there. Yeah, very good effort. 42-34, and uh, goes to third in the end. Finish on the four faults for Zoe Concha and uh, La Una. Ben Mayer is the winner of our $200,000 four-star Grand Prix. Uh, presented by JTWG here this afternoon. So they finish in the number one spot. Coco Faith in second with that one time fault with Aventador 5 at uh, 48.29. Nicely done from her. And Zoe Concha with uh, La Una finishing in the 
third spot there for Belgium on the uh, four faults. Uh, Champion League takes uh, fourth spot with Sean Wordley and fifth place Tom Watchman and uh, Berlux Z for the uh, top five in our Nations Cup Grand Prix class here this afternoon. But a fun class, very exciting to watch and uh, definitely some challenging jumping, but the best one coming up on top, world number two, Ben Mayer. Very well done job and congratulations to him. There we go, there's the final results and uh, there's our top 11. Ben Mayer at the top of that for uh, Great Britain as well. Uh, Coco Faith uh, for the US finishing in second. It's uh, Zoe Contra in third for Belgium. And uh, then fourth place to Sean Worley of New Zealand. Fifth to uh, Tom Watchman of Ireland. Uh, sixth place to uh, Daniel Blumen of Israel. Seventh to Mario Delorier. And eighth place for uh, David Cameron. There's the top 12 overall. Shane Sweetnam just coming into that for Ireland. And uh, those on down. Well, readying for the presentation, we're going to hand over to uh, Peter Doubleday and uh, the arena team here for that. Our thanks to JTWG as we come to that presentation. And uh, that is just moments away. Congratulations, Ben Mayer ticks off another win. He has won this previously with Eureka for Nations Cup Week. Completes a sunny Nations Cup Week, hopefully for the rest of the day, fingers crossed. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. Big team event, of course, last night. Grand Prix again today. Uh, ben Mayer, Coco Faith, Zoe Concert, top three. Thanks from Danny and I. We're going to step aside and hand you over to the legendary voice of American show jumping. We will honor our top three here in just a moment. They'll be returning. We'll have our round of honor. We also have the uh, leading international rider award ahead of us and the Nile Grimes perpetual memorial trophy that will be presented following the completion of the prize giving ceremony. Ceremony and the awards coming up. There you see again our final top 12 up on the video screen. And also, William Harvey is joining us here today as part of the uh, JTWG Equestrian Services Incorporated and their involvement providing the exceptional surfaces for our world-class and Olympic caliber show jumping here in Wellington. Top three are being dressed for our presentation of the awards and we will be uh, honoring our top three and here they're on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, we honor our third place finisher here today and we congratulate Belgian rider Zoe Cotter with La Una for the Step X Stables of Belgium and they'll be coming up for the third place. Today our winners have the uh, Mainstream Munchies sponsored by Mainstream Streamline Horse Transport, Mainstream based in both Europe and the USA with bases on both sides of the Atlantic. And again, our congratulations, third place to Belgian rider Zoe Cotter. Second place honors for the USA, we congratulate Aventador 5 and Coco Faith for the Hillside Farm in Fairfield, Connecticut, finishing out in second place. And notching yet another victory here on our Winter Equestrian Festival, the British rider, Olympic champion, we congratulate Ben Mayer and Point Break coming up for the top honors here today. 
Point Break owned by the uh, rider along with Pamela Wright and Charlotte Rossiter. And Point Break, the uh, Swedish warm blood stallion in the winner's circle today for the JTWG Incorporated four-star CSIO Grand Prix. And again, they will enjoy the, uh, send the support, uh, Mainstream Munchies, again, as part of our presentation of the awards here today. And a Munchie for Point Break, well-deserved. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is the uh, tradition and proper protocol. We honor the winning rider in our international competition with the playing of the anthem. Please rise now for the anthem of Great Britain. Not to another victory here in our Winter Equestrian Festival, the Olympic gold medalist with a win here today. And we are about to honor and enjoy the round of honor coming up as we will again salute our top three here on our afternoon program. And Ben will lead us off with point break for the win here today in our JTWG a Grand Prix at the four-star level. And now we congratulate our Groom Awards. And again, the uh, Groom Award on behalf of the Double H Farms, a $500 Grooms Award to the winning groom. And we again thank the Double H Farms for honoring the caretaker. Kirsty Bond is the uh, caretaker for Point Brick. Also, ladies and gentlemen, part of our closing ceremonies of our international division, the uh, leading international rider award, Martha Wachtel, Jalacour, Douglas Elliman together with Michael and Wendy Smith. Michael with us here today, proud to sponsor the uh, leading international rider based on the uh, point system, results from the Adequan Challenge Cup, which Ben won in today's Grand Prix. And again, we salute our international rider being presented by Michael Smith, Ben Mayer, our leading international rider for week number eight for the Olympic champion. Yeah, in memory of Niall Grimes, uh, next we'll present uh, the Cheers at Perpetual Trophy. Yeah, Niall Grimes was an accomplished equestrian whose lifelong dream was to represent Ireland in a Nations Cup class. It was at the Winter Equestrian Festival in Palm Beach that Niall realized his dream. Yeah, the Niall Grimes Trophy is presented each year to the top Irish rider during the CSIO Nations Cup week. 
And the award uh, presented based on total money won in CSI Oak classes uh, during week eight of the Winter Equestrian Festival. Congratulations to Tom Watchman uh, earning uh, the Cheers uh, Perpetual Trophy in memory of uh, Niall Grimes. Uh, recent uh, winners uh, of the Niall Grimes uh, Cheers uh, Perpetual Trophy last year was uh, Daniel Coyle uh, to take the honors. Uh, the Irish team uh, earning the honors in 2022 and uh, Bertram Allen, uh, the 2021 leader. Uh, other winners of the award, uh, Shane Sweetnam, uh, Richie Maloney, uh, Keanu Connor, Connor Swill, uh, Kevin Babington and uh, Dara Kinney, uh, Tom Watchman, adding his name uh, to a list of uh, very talented and well-deserving riders here as the 2024 recipient of uh, the Cheers Perpetual Trophy in memory of Niall Grimes.